Hey, everybody. Welcome to Global Folk Dance Party. September 16th, the party we never wanted to have. So um, we'll have a great time and we'll kick things off by playing Eve's Red Album. And we'll see you all in about 40 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. 
go, friends. Eve Moreau's Red Album. Um, the event we didn't want to have, right? So, uh, boy, 10 seconds, five seconds, and now I'll write Kiri. Okay, welcome everybody to the Global Folk Dance Party. Is Let's talk about what this is today. This is not a memorial for Eve. It is the family was, of course, working on that, working on many, many things to celebrate our friend for us, like so many groups across the country, both online and in person, huge amount of Eve Moreau dances. So we thought we'd reschedule our Dance the Alphabet, which will happen probably first half of 2024 at the Global Folk Dance Party, and celebrate Eve. A couple of things different is Cricket is coming in. She's uh, had an event to go to that I'm sure they played Eve Moreau dances at and is coming here. She and I are going to MC this together to kind of talk back and forth. We're going to have dances, as you see on the playlist itself up uh, in your upper left hand corner. But you also see things where we have sharing memories. We've got Yap has joined us today, which is just wonderful to talk a bit. But we also want to hear from you guys. So when we get a little closer, if you would raise your hand, if you want to give a nice story about Eve, you know, we all miss him. We're looking forward to sharing stories about Eve is, and we also have four or five videos that you may or may not have seen before. Some put together special for this event, some put together that you've seen before. So let's spend a few hours talking and sharing about Eve, dancing a little bit and uh, keep our spirits a little higher and uh, celebrate kind of everybody's friend. Right. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody being here. Thank you for the emails and the ideas and the million postings on Facebook is it's kind of made uh, everybody's heavy heart a little lighter. So let's kick it off by going to one of our regulars is Holly down in Texas, where Eve was for Texas camp last November, Holly. Yeah, we were very honored to have Eve and Franz with us for our camp. It was our 75th camp. And when I first talked to Eve and Franz, we invited them to come to camp as our guests just to hang out with us. We know that Eve's been retired for years. And I wasn't going to ask the question, will you come teach? But we want, they're part of our family. Um, Eve has been to Texas camp 10 times. He's been to San Antonio Festival three or four times. Um, they're really part of our community, and we wanted them there to hang out with us. And they said, of course, they would come. And so about a month before Texas camp, I was uh, talking to Eve on the phone, and he said, we're really looking forward to it, and we, we would each like to teach a session. And I said, well, that's, that's incredible. You don't have to, you know, but... If you want to, we would love it. So we were very fortunate that even Franz both taught a session for us. But the best part was just having them there, hanging out, just having meals together, chatting, um, having Eve get in the line, the dance line next to me. I mean, it was just, it was totally magical. Perfect. Holly, that is great. Is, um, you know, um, Thanks for starting. So what are you doing this week? Last night you did a, uh, a party featuring Eve dances. Yeah, um, I took over the entire night of our in-person dancing last night. The entire night was Eve dances with a few of Francis dances mixed in as well. Uh, but we did, um, I think, 37 dances. Uh, some of them were, were taught. Um, so without duplicates we did 37 dances and um our repertoire of eve dances of course is much much bigger than that so i think we're going to have to do it again next year i mean ne not next year next week with all the ones we didn't get to well how about kick us off with one to start all right so um we're going to start with one of eve's most recognizable and uh widely done dances we're starting off happy. Uh, this is Dobrojanska Roka. Thank you. 
finish it with a U, U, U. Thank you. It has to be, right? <laughs> it has to be. Oh, Holly, thank you for a great start to the, to the party. As we said, thank you, everybody. It keeps coming in. And thank you to our Facebook friends for joining us uh, as well. So we've got Facebook people watching. We've got us. We're rocking along. We just started the party. We will be recording, or we are recording this, and they'll be formatting this, and we'll get it up to the Peninsula Folk Dance YouTube channel as well for parts if you have to leave early or people who haven't been able to make it. So, and Holly's kicking us off. What's next, Holly? From the Red Album, Pandalash. Nice. That just always makes me smile. <laughs> yeah, right. And I, I, you know, great dance. I love that prancing step, right? Is going around, going on a room on the high steps on that just makes you feel so cool. I used to be able to jump higher. <laughs> as, as we all were able to, but we're still jumping, right? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, and Holly, you had a huge list. What percentage of your list did you get to last night? Um, about 40%. Yeah. And well, we got to 40% and that's what we were, that's of the repertoire that we could do with the people who are in town. There's people that need to lead some of these dances that weren't in town. 
So if you include that, we got to a third of our repertoire. There we go. My friend, thank you for kicking things off. Is um, hey, looking for the stories, looking forward to you hopping on and talking to other people as they share their stories. And now let's go to guest host is uh, Mady. Is Eve 250 dances, if I remember right, about that for number of dances he taught? Oh, so many. And so many were winners. I think we do more Eve dances than those of any other teacher. And certainly in my groups we do, because I loved his teaching. I sought him out. I, I tried to get together a list of all the places that I had learned from him. And there are at least, I mean, it's about 20 workshops that I was at over the years, at least. And some of them near me and some of them not so near me, but I definitely sought out Eve anytime I could get to where he was teaching because he was just my favorite teacher. Um, my, first Stockton, was, my first Stockton was Eve and I'd been dancing maybe nine months and it was like, mm -hmm. oh, right. Yeah, I came to Stockton the first time for Eve in 2007 because he was part of that amazing lineup. I went to my first big away weekend for Eve, that was back in 1995, in, in 94, in Pennsylvania, when it was really hard to get away from a, you know, a family with a small child. But I, you know, was able to get out to a weekend um, and went to my first Montreal camp for a week in 2002, again, to catch Eve. Um, and then, of course, at June camp, we had him uh, well, he taught at June camp twice while I was in the area, but couldn't go because I had a little tiny child and kids weren't allowed at June camp at that point. Um, as soon as it was possible in 2005, we brought Eve back. And that was when I was running June camp. And that was when we moved to a larger location because we knew he would be such a draw. And indeed he was. That was one of our um, biggest crowds at June camp. And I think our biggest year at June camp ever was when he and Frost taught there in 2011. So we had him at June camp uh, a couple of times in the 2000s, as well as a couple of times in uh, the around 1990. Uh, but he also taught in the Midwest a whole lot because he came to Folk Ball several times. He came to Folklore Village for their Midwinter Fest, and I sought him out there. Uh, he was at Tapestry most recently, I think, in 2014. Uh, and every time, wonderful teaching of new dances and even old dances, he would bring them back, but maybe with a new piece of music. It was just always refreshing. He had the best music. And I think one of the great gifts he gave to us, and certainly to me, was this love of Bulgarian music. Under, you know, He brought so much variety in music and made us aware that there was this unbelievable world of music out there You know, before world music became a thing. It was just a, a beautiful gift to have the music and the ways to move to it. I remember Dweezil Zappa talking about he and Frank playing together and he listed down what they play. They play jazz, they play blues and they play Bulgarian and they play, right? So it's all the yeah. music is Bulgarian rhythms and broken Bulgarian music. Oh. Mm -hmm. What dance are you going to do to kick off Celebrating Eve? So I'm going to start with Staro Pomashko, which is a dance that he taught in uh, at June Camp in 2005. It's a dance from the Western Rodop region um, of the Pomak people, who are the Muslim people there. Just one of those gloriously beautiful pieces of music. Let's see. Yeah, I've shared my music. Let's hope it's all there. <laughs>
beautiful dance. And I think as everybody knows, right, a ton of videos um, of Eve on YouTube, including him doing this uh, in Israel is a very nice video to kind of that I use to brush up with besides whoever mentioned in chat, right? His DVDs, the six, seven DVDs he put out, right? Is that just beautiful, beautiful dances of his dances for us to be able to review and relive. Yes, it's, I mean, it's wonderful that he left such a legacy and left so much of it available for us. That was a, a real gift. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I feel shaky just even doing it and thinking about it. I start <laughs> talking maybe in five seconds in, you're just like, you know, is that, uh, I think all 204 make it 250 of us all a little still shaky. And yeah, we'll yeah. You know, and let's let's face it, dancing is all about holding on to those people around you. It's hard to do these by yourself in <laughs> some cases, <laughs> you know, especially the balance just, oh my. Okay, well, Absolutely. let's get... A little more earthy. Um, my next dance is Say Say Bob, which is one of the very first dances I ever learned from him. Um, I was a grad student in Ithaca, and I can't remember if he came to Cornell while I was there. I've been searching my old records, but I know that we went back to that area in 1985 for a, a workshop, weekend workshop in that area at Painted Post. And I'm pretty sure that that's when I learned Say Say Bop. And it was also one of the first dances I danced in the larger group of Chicago dancers once I got here. So it's been a real long time favorite. When I went to Europe to write my dissertation, uh, I saved my sanity during that period by teaching myself how to play the accordion. And Say Say Bop was the first thing I learned. I tried to transcribe. I am not a great accordionist, by the way, but it was fun trying to transcribe that piece of music because it's a great piece of music. So. Here is Say Say Bop from Dobruja. Oh, oh, oh. 
fabulous, fabulous matey. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me to be here. It it was I know I was supposed to be here for the alphabet and look forward to that, but it is truly special to me to be part of this because and Eve, it was just one of my absolute favorites, if not my favorite teacher of all time, know, and really my inspiration for folk dancing. And with that, you're part of the team when we, you know, when I did the email out to say, hey, how about we change this to an e-party? And you and Catherine were both like, we're in, right? We had worked on the alphabet party, but as soon as I sent the email out, everybody was like, we're all in on this, right? Well, what what an honor to be included. Thank you. Thank you, Mady. And everybody, welcome Cricket. Cricket's back from her other event. Hi, Cricket. And as we said, Cricket and I are going to kind of MC through the whole show, kind of sharing with you guys and everybody share with it. Hi, Cricket. Hi. I'm sorry I'm a little late, but Heidi Vorst's kid, Susa Fusa, was dancing at the Polish Festival today. So I told them that I would come out and support the kids as they were dancing at the Polish Festival. And as often happens, the program was running a little bit late. And of course, we had to stop and pick up some kielbasa, kielbasa on the way home. So I am here, returned from the Polish festival. And I'm so sorry I missed the first part of it. I got to see the last of Sese Bop, and that's always been a favorite dance. So well, hello to everybody. It's just so wonderful to have everybody here. And what we've told uh, told everybody cricket is Holly went as Mady's going to start up our first you know, spotlight uh, coming up. Everybody, you see sharing memories. We've got Yap is going to kick things off with some stories about him and Eve, but we want to hear from you guys too. So hold your, oh, you can leave Cricket up too. Uh, hold uh, your hand up um, on Zoom. Raise your hand if you'd like to say something to kind of prime the well. My story is when Cricket and I were at NFO two years ago, a year and a half ago now, Cricket, mm -hmm. is you invited, even Franz were there, right? Is it part of the discussion and they gave talks? And people were singing. And I was next to Eva was singing. And afterwards, I was like, oh, my God, you're a wonderful singer. And he looked at me and he said, very few things in the world I like doing better than singing. And that's my Eve story that I didn't know about that I want to share with everybody. Yeah. You know? That's cool. Right? I didn't, realize, uh -huh. I didn't realize that he enjoyed singing that much. I have heard him sing and I knew he had a lovely voice, but that's a fun thing to know. Yeah, it was heartfelt. He was just like, because he was like, oh my God, thank you for saying something because I love singing. It's my favorite thing to do. So that's, that's the little bonus memory I have of him. That's cool. Well, let's bring Mady back up is we have our first uh, Global Spotlight Dance. So Mady is going to lead us and everybody knows how Global Spotlight dances are for those who haven't joined us before. Mady's always going to be on screen and then the team is going to spotlight four or six other people so we can kind of continue to dance together while apart. So Mady, we're okay. doing Dobra Nevesto. Dobra Nevesto, which has been one of my, you know, beginning dances for all my groups for so long. I can't even remember where, when I learned it, but I look, was looking at my old notebooks last night and it's in one of the very first ones. So it has been around for a while. Um, anyway, it's uh, something for everybody to join in on. Turn on your camera. Let's dance, everybody. Mady, move your stool. Thank you.
was Bravo, so everybody. cool. Cool to see that many people out there dancing. That was just awesome. Yes. Really good to see that screen full of screens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, maybe uh, any, before we get going on our little uh, sharing memories, any other memories you want to share about Eve right now? No, I was, I, the, the main thing I wanted to share was what I had said already about the music and how he just had such a wonderful feel for music. He, he would often sing while teaching dances, which was one of the things I learned from him in learning how to teach dances, how important the music was. Um, but also it was interesting to me as I saw him over the years when he would bring back a dance and put it to new music. And sometimes it was, often it was better, not, sometimes it was just different. But he had a wonderful feel for music and a wonderful feel for matching steps and music and making dances, I think, more accessible because he knew how to fit these traditional steps to the music so beautifully. And I and think made wonderful music choices. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Uh, the two versions, of, or at least the two main versions of Say Say Bob, right? Is that, mm -hmm. that I've seen him dance both ways as opposed to a teacher who always dances it to one piece yes. of music, right? So, yeah. so wonderful. And several yeah. other dances. Sipnozhensko has two wonderful pieces of music and uh, something else he brought back, Brosnit Servul. I went to review it and the music that I remember learning it to originally, it, he uses a total, used a totally different piece 15 years later. So. He really understood the importance of the music. Uh, he Certainly and I talked did. one time about, you know, what makes dances really um, stick around because certainly he had... I think a larger percentage of his dances that were keepers than most teachers have. And he's, he felt that one of the most important things was good music and a good recording of the music. You yes, know, not I agree. The music was good, but a good recording. Yeah. And Maybe, I agree, that's you. why we kept so many dances of his. Maybe thank you. We'll, we'll see you in a little bit. Cricket, mm -hmm. time for Yacht. Here we go. Haven't seen Yap for quite a while. How you doing, Yap? <laughs> yes, well, concerning. <laughs> we'll get that's all... There we are. There that's you also are. that's also good, Betty. Yes, concerning the circumstances, I'm fine. I'm sharing a lot of first shock, and it's this can't be. And how do we do without Eve? And then the reflection on how much Eve has meant to all of us. And I've already heard some of you. Um, a lot of people know me as the other new kid on the block <laughs> many years ago when I came to the U.S. as the other Bulgarian folk dance specialist. And um, what people maybe don't know is that before we became colleagues, we were friends. And uh, Adoni, I'm so glad for the uh, and the team for the invitation. And a couple of times I will come in with a little five minutes or Less uh, to share you some lights on sides of Eve that you might not hear in uh, other people's memories because they're kind of personal, how we got to know each other and how we got to work together, not just doing our workshop separately, but many we had many joint ventures, which I'm very proud and pleased to share with you. And so I learned from Eve as a friend that he always is ready to help and share. He introduced uh, a lot of other teachers to this country. Uh, Bulgarians, Petar Ilyev, uh, Gergana Panova, to, to mention a few. Uh, he brought musicians, Theodosis Pasov, uh, and also uh, Petar Ralchev, the accordion player. And it was not, it was never only about Eve. It was always about other people, helping other people, always uh, sharing music and opportunities. So in my second appearance, after a couple of more dances, I will tell you about... Um, some workshops that I, that we did together, Eve and I, and also some recordings. We lived in Bulgaria for a whole month, Eve and I, in an apartment in Sofia, went back and forth to the studio to do some of these recordings from the Red Album, again, uh, in, a, in a smaller setting, and also of my dances on a CD called Aide Nahoro. Those anecdotes I'll tell you in my next little break, and uh, Adoni, you know when that is, right? Absolutely. Okay, so... The question that uh, I probably would get asked if I won't answer it already now is how did Eve and I get to know each other? Well, that was in 19... I have to look at my notes. I prepared this real well because I want to condense it a little bit. 19... 
69 in Amsterdam at the American Express office downtown. I was there with my girlfriend at that time. Was, yeah, Cricket is laughing. Who was there? Eve Moreau <laughs> with a little backpack and uh, <clears throat> a little uh, shoulder back. I recognized the thing what was in the shoulder back right away. It was a Uher professional tape recorder. I thought, hmm, this looks like a typical tourist with a camera on, around his neck and a tape recorder on his side. The, he's going to tape everything he sees. This is the tourist. And while talking to him, he said he's on his way to Bulgaria. I said, hello, hi. And Evelyn and I, my girlfriend at that time, were talking to him. He was looking for a place to stay. And we had some coffee. And Evelyn said, I have an extra place in my apartment in Amsterdam. Why don't you stay with us? He said, yeah, but I need to buy a car first because tomorrow I'm going to drive to Bulgaria and I need to buy a car. And at the American Express, there were all, all people gathering to turn in the car that they bought and, and, and sell it again and, and another one could buy it and drive it. So Eve bought a Fiat car, Fiat, for $400 at that time. And he made it to Bulgaria. He never made it back with that car, but he made it to Bulgaria. But before he went to Bulgaria, I'm still talking 1969, the day after he postponed his trip because there was a wedding going on in Holland with the first band that I played in. I was in the band and the accordion player got married. So that was the band that I recorded my first Bulgarian LP. And so uh, Eve said, hmm, that sounds interesting. Bulgarian music and uh, a Dutch band playing Bulgarian. I have to see it before I believe it. So we went there the next day on a, on a, on a Sunday afternoon. And this was the perfect time for Eve to test out his microphone and his Uher tape recorder. Now, listen carefully, you my dear friends. That's the same tape recorder, the same microphone that he recorded Sadi Muma. Sundance Kohoro with two weeks later after he came to Amsterdam. And I was a folk dancer, so I thought, hmm, this guy looks really interesting. You know, maybe something, you know, we can work out together. I was I was not specialized in Bulgarian yet. That happened later uh, through some other contacts. But I had known Eve that way as a tourist passing through Amsterdam. And here is the cassette that I got from Eve years later with the recordings of that whole wedding. <laughs> And, and I'm playing the flute a uh, little out of tune. I was a beginner and everything, but it's a document. He has the tape with his whole wedding on it. And after the first tune with this typical Yves Moreau voice, he says, don't you dare to copy this cassette or make an LP out of it. I got the distortion on on several of the pieces. <laughs> yeah, how old were the two of you at that point? Well, even I differ. Um, yeah, how old? Let me see. 1969. Uh, I was 19 and Eve was 21. Now, I, I want to. I don't think most people realize how young the two of you were at that point. That's why I brought it up. Well, and it's so important. So now the other thing is after 96, Eve made Amsterdam his regular stopover if he went to Amsterdam. By that time, I was also dancing and I was teaching Balkan dances, got specialized in Bulgaria. Uh, through a visiting Bulgarian teacher. And Eve came to join us. Every time he came to Bulgaria, often, not every time, often he stopped in Amsterdam. So we were already friends, uh, thanks to that meeting in front of American Express and him buying a car. So uh, maybe that's why Eve never saw, we saw, never saw each other as competitors. We were friends first. So the second little anecdote, and I told it already to Andoni, I want to share with you that, uh, I think it was 90, 2005, um, I, uh, yeah, I had returned from the United States and had re uh, returned to the Netherlands. And this time I didn't meet even Amsterdam, but somebody was knocking on my door. I opened the door and I said, I know you. Francis, you're the son of Yves Moreau. He said, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm looking for a place to stay. Can I stay with you one more night? I said, you're welcome, come in. So what happened, he had a little notebook from Eve Moreau, the, his address book copied. Because Eve, he went to all places and folk dancers put, put him up on workshops in Paris, in Tokyo, in uh, Berlin, in Stockholm, in Amsterdam, in London, name it. So Francis just graduated from high school and he wanted to travel. 
I guess you guessed also with me, from whom did he learn that? Travel the world. But he didn't have much money, so he thought, if I have all the addresses where my father stayed, I don't need to go to a hotel. So now I have to tell you the funny part of it. He didn't stay for one night. He stayed for a whole month. <laughs> so then I became part of the family kind of too. So uh, and then I took him to a workshop where I had to teach. And I um, he did the sound. He didn't want to dance. He didn't sound. And I introduced Francis as the son of the guy that taught me Denyo Vogoro, which I taught in my workshop. <laughs> And I'm sure others, while I'm talking here, they have a lot to say about Eve or the trigger some responses that you have. So we want to draw you in. And then I'll see you in a, after a couple of dances for another little window of my personal experiences. One of the great, things, my, you, one of the great things you said, Jaap, was right. Always comrades, always friends, never competitors. It, and that's true mostly through the folk dance world, right? Almost everybody get along and you don't see each other for years. But you talked about how super special it was with Eve, with all the Bulgarian teachers, all the Balkan teachers, right? Kind of how, what a special guy he is, right? Def definitely, yes. Yeah. You know? uh, introducing Gergana, introducing Roberto, right? Is that... Roberto, one of them, yeah, also. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you so very much. Is and Yap's going to be around for a while. He's also going to be at Paul's party at about four hours. So after Yap does his <laughs> next thing, he may go grab a nap for a minute. But we also will ask him about the other things he's doing to kind of honor Eve. I, I want to show one one thing real quick, Cricket, because you said that you 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 discovered and liked so much that Eve liked to sing, right? Mm -hmm. This is the, this will be the beginning of my next section. Stockton Folk Dance Camp, nineteen ninety one. Oh my. Eve and I both singing harmonies on Karam Phil. <laughs> More of that later on after the next dances and, and some of your comments. But I wanted to show that to you, the picture of Eve singing here. And he sure had a wonderful voice. Yeah. And Cricket cool. Alhan Alessandra also put in chat that when he, for the first few years at Balkanut in Italy, is he used to have an hour daily singing hour with him. Oh. Isn't that nice? You know, and talking about the people that, that Eve has introduced to the folk dance world, you, of course, you can't forget Sonia and Christian. Absolutely. And uh, Godfather, you know, gave Sonia away as the, mm -hmm. as the father of the bride, right? Absolutely. Oh, Cricket, we also have Mary is up oh, for wonderful. Story. Hi, Mary. Hi, everybody. Um, I just want to tell you how wonderful it is to be with these people who I don't have to try to explain, like to my non folk dancing friends. Why was this person so important to you? Or what, you know, because it's, it's just very nice. And I'm, I'm glad. Thank you for all being here. I just suddenly had a memory of something from Texas camp. Maybe one of you who were Texas camp goers uh, remember this. Um, it would have been 74, 75, mid seventies or something. And we were dancing in the main, the big hall, a Romanian dance and memory fails. It, I don't think it was Flora Cech Altonesca, but it was something really hot, really fast. And it had mouth harp, you know, as the main instrument. And we are all, and very complicated choreography. And all of a sudden, everybody fell apart. We were just dancing away and we completely lost the patterns. And then we listened and we realized that Eve had taken the record off and he had a microphone and he was imitating a mouth harp. And he, he was just doing it and it sounded so much like it that nobody noticed the record being taken off until we fell apart because there weren't the musical cues that were telling us to do the next step. That's all. I just thought of that. And... That is funny. Thank you for sharing that. What a great story. Oh, thank you, Mary. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Uh, so let's see. We don't have any more hands up. Gang, raise your hands. We're going to have three or four of these through the through the evening, the afternoon and evening. We'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you also for the comments and chat. But Cricket, who are we going to next for dancing? We've got Debbie coming up. So we're moving to Oregon. Hey, my buddy down just south of me. There Hello you go. There. there we go. 
So um, I wanted to share that uh, that uh, Eve has been a longtime part of my life dancing. Probably the re the sole reason that I am a Balkan dancer um, started in the early 70s when we were in a teen performance group out of Corvallis, Oregon. We, you know, danced all these dances practically every week. And, you know, I look at that list and go, yeah, feet, you have to dance later. Don't be dancing the whole Red album as it plays because you've got to do some of them later. Um, and the, the thing that was that I wanted to share was that Coming to Tex from Texas, actually, and not knowing him there to Oregon, that was um, folk dancing was the place that I found my place, that mm -hmm. I was comfortable and that I, you know, I was good at this. And so it's always been, you know, my confidence base, my place where, you know, if you go, oh, I don't, you know, I don't feel good. I don't want to go to Thursday night dancing again. And then go, but you always feel good when you do. You always do. And that's been, you know, that's been an ongoing thing. So I took a break for about 20 years and missed some of these more recent dances. I'm happy to have the, um, the six CDs. And I treasure a personal note from Eve that said, um, you know, thank you so much for buying my memories. You know, that was that was wow. I know where it is. It's not, you know, it's not framed on a wall, but I know where that note is. So yeah. Anyway. So um I I uh, I took a two hour break and danced with another group last Sunday as uh, Adoni was saying when we were rearranging. I came back and went, oh wait, are there any dances left? Because the team members were there, they were living on their email and changing. And I came back from a break and said, Oh, wait, are there any left? I have to come up with eight. You know, we'll get to part of them. Yes, there are always dances left of Eve's. So I'm going to do uh, two here. I'll just let them go right in a row. Silistrinsky Tropanka and Radomirsko Oro. And I've got my music shared. So here they come. Silistrinska Tropanka.
and now Radomir Skoro. Not yet. I get to catch my <laughs> breath before that one. <laughs> you know, you always manage to find these dances that I've never seen before. Really? That one's on the Red Album. I love, yeah, that's a dance. You know, there's always dances that we want to bring back to it. Always kind of fade away. Debbie, that is one of them. You've, you, besides listening to it earlier, seeing you dance it, it's like that's coming back. Remember that in a good, in a good, strong belt hold and the way that felt when you all kind of hit the little syncopation. Yeah. You know, and it was, it's interesting. You, when you play those, those uh, pieces of music to hear him pronounce it at the beginning, you know, we have a pronunciation project going with NFO to try to create a, a spreadsheet where we can help people to be able to pronounce names correctly. And Eve was aware of that from the very beginning and so pronounce the names at the beginning of the dances so we would know how to pronounce them yeah and it's kind of i talked over the first one it's like you know when i play them listen we go sondansko horo you know <laughs> and you know it's it's that recording well and also it it helps us to be able to pronounce them correctly and mm -hmm. a lot of people have edited that off and i think that's a shame because it it can be helpful yeah you know anyway i'll be back later I love what Debbie said, Cricket, with kind of when you hear, I hadn't thought about that because I'm one of those people who's edited it off, but it's kind of nice having it there because you then you know the version you're doing, right? As if it doesn't start off with Sandansko Horo, it's some alternate version. That's a great idea, Debbie. Well, the other thing about it is that oftentimes those dancers don't have any real intro. And so, you know, when they say it, then you have a few seconds and you know it's just ready to start. Yeah, very exactly. clever. 
Well, friends, we're going to get out of here. We're going to do a couple more dances, but raise your hand if you want to say something. We've got Laura's going to say something. Is raise your hands. Cricket, we're heading somewhere else now, right? Are we going to talk to Laura first, or are we going to head off nope. to... Nope, we're going to... Well, there head they off are. to Lon and Hollis. There we go. Hi there. We're going to be doing two dances from Eve, one from the north part of Bulgaria, and then a very different one from sort of the Black Sea area. So the first one is Komorevsko or... Oh, one quick thing. It was, um, he learned it in 1970. He learned it in 1970, but we didn't learn it until 2007. So I don't know if he taught it anywhere else after he learned it back then, but. Turn on original sound. Ah, oh, they I had to log off and log back on again. Exactly. It's funny, it was so easy at the beginning when we were on Zoom every week. <laughs> Is that the new goose over there? It's the other grand dog from the other <laughs> daughter. And he's also very old. <laughs> so anyway. So what is this dog's name? That's Nico. That's Nico. Nico. So this isn't goose That's anymore. His name is way in his tail anyway. Oh, he's got a tail like goose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Nico, huh? Very yeah. good. He's a sweetheart. Anyway, the next dance is Gagus um, Kohoro. Uh, but people also know as Varnensky Chichek. It's from the Black Sea area, and you can hear the wooden spoon influence in this dance. Uh, these were Christians that came from that part uh, of Turkey, I think, and moved to Bulgaria. Anyway. And you can hear Eve uh, telling us, properly. Tell us <laughs> name. Yeah, there is good for
Got off somewhere there, but it's I love that music. Whew. Well done, Paula Salon. Yeah. Is two great dancers, do different styles. I love how you chose right two very different styles, both from Eve, right? That was nicely, nicely done. They were pretty awesome, yeah. And that second dance, I don't know that I've ever heard that music even. I loved it. Cool piece of music. I used to dance it often with Suzanne. Uh, ah, yeah. And at first dance, that and Rano e Radka Ranila were the two dances from 2007. I just love both not top of the line dances. I shouldn't say top of the line, but kind of not done popularly places, but love them, right? I said, and that's and that's what's nice. We all have our our little secret faves as well, you know. Like uh, what is that? Um, that second break and. Uh, Chakragan Kino is kind of like the best second in folk dance, right? When you finish the first part before you, that, that secret second of when you pause before you begin it, begin it again. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, it's funny. I've often said that there are years at Stockton where there are so many good dances that you can only take back so many each year to your own group. And so you kind of pick the ones that you think fit best with your group, but then there's this, whole other three or four other dances that you really don't get to teach and if there's really good dances the next year then those may just fall totally off and it's unfortunate because those are just as good as you know a dances and and often they get missed it's kind of like if too many good movies come out in any one season you know there are some good movies that nobody even you know they don't make the list somehow and we have that happen sometime with dances, and yet they're really great dances. So it's fantastic to have them brought back in and, and get them into the repertoire. And it's nice that teachers are bringing back dances from their older repertoires, right? Is that, I know a lot of camps are encouraging that. Teach us new stuff and teach us stuff we don't know that you've done in the past. Uh, Paulus, you and Lon said about uh, Komarov School, right? Learned it in the 70s. We all saw it in the 2000s, right? And then other stuff that, so it's nice that when we go to camps, it's sort of like, man, I get to learn this dance that I've seen for 20 years and I don't know it, as well as something new. So that's great. Very oh, it's fun. Good. Thank you. We'll see you guys in a little bit, right? And now we have a video, I understand. Now, Absolutely. What is, what is so this particular video? bunch of uh this is from stockton so we've been unearthing a bunch wow. of archives thanks uh in part to a bunch of our great uh campers and several of our board of directors members this is one that you may have seen bits and pieces of uh that called the three faces of eve so this was uh self-explanatory from the video so dale if you would start with the video let's watch for a few minutes Do we have sound? Coming now, should be.
He was such a comedian, oh, and his impersonations of the other teachers were <laughs> just too much. Absolutely. And we're going to put the uh, link in chat for those videos on YouTube. Press some other ones from Stockton, and we'll be sharing videos of everything you see here on our YouTube channel. But you're right, Cricket, just a great, great comedian. And you know, just you pick it up immediately on his oppression and his great, great sense of humor. Oh. Incredible sense of humor. We have a couple of comments. Are we going to take those now or are we waiting? Let's, let's take them now as I just co-hosted Laura and Rebecca. Laura. You're muted. How's that? There you go. Perfect. Okay. All right. I am like Mady. I was a, an, an Eve follower from workshop to workshop for decades. And uh, I could tell you lots of things, but my very favorite story of Eve, I think bears repeating. I was a, a brand new dancer, almost brand. And it was my first Idlewild camp. And he was teaching there. And he had unfortunately been told what to teach. And I can't remember whether it was Dobrzhanska Rucka or Gusheska Rechenitsa, but I'll tell you, it was one that was pretty tricky. And he looked out at the audience, the people that he was going to be teaching, and he saw all these little old gray-haired ladies. And I could just see what was going on in his mind. Like, why did they want me to teach this? <laughs> to these folks, but you know what? He did it. He not only did it, but to my sheer amazement, it was successful. He got them doing whatever the dance was. But to me, the important thing was what he said afterwards. He said, you may never see this dance or do this dance again, but for this time and place, you were here for this experience. And that's what was valuable. Wow. The end. 
It's funny. I could remember a workshop where he was getting ready to present a dance and somebody said, is this next one a difficult dance? And he stopped for a second and he said, a bad teacher can make any dance difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. He could, he could get you through anything. He would break it down and you would feel comfortable. That's a, such a great story. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for joining today, Laura. And then we have Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay, I want to share something. I've been doing Ipmoros dances since when I was in college. Because in 1980s, uh, Mr. Zhang invited him to Taiwan and maybe Asia to teach. So I introduced some Balkan dance to Asia. And at that time, it was a new kind of dance to us. And we enjoyed the energy and the different uh, style of dances. So I, we, I did a lot of dances uh, from Yip, but I never met him until I went to Stockton camp. And oh, that's, uh, that's the teacher of uh, what I did, uh, Treaty Putti, and some da- all the famous dances that my favorite dances. So he's an icon to me. Oh, I met, I fi- met him finally. And in Asia, uh, in Taiwan, we, we, we are still do a lot of dances from Yves Moreau and the Asia camp. The, the once there's the Asia camp 50th anniversary camp, it's a big one. So we invited him to, to meet, uh, old people and old friends and people, uh, enjoy the, the camps. And so far as, uh, I know that in, uh, my friend, there's, uh, in Taiwan, the regular sessions, most of the, dan- the groups, they do some dances from it to celebrate. So when you, next time when you come to Asia, you can do a lot of dances from Eve. This, uh, thanks Eve. That That's all. Beautiful. And Rebecca, you teach several of his dances at your classes, right? Yes. Uh, recently, uh, to set, uh, to uh, memorize. So I teach Eve Morris dance in every uh, uh every uh classes. But and Rebecca is, has yeah. recently started this year in the world of folk dancing. Rebecca and Evan have started a dance group in Fremont, California. And then Rebecca and Evan and Catherine are chairing the statewide uh, folk dance festival for next year in Northern California, of which I'm sure we'll do a lot of Eve dances. Yes, yes. We are going to host the statewide 2024 next year in May. Actually, it was my one of my choice for the teacher. Yeah. Yes. But we will see next year. Come to stay wine. There's going a new dances waiting for you. There we go. Rebecca, where thank it, you. Where is it going to be in 2024? In California, Bay Area. Fremont Bay. area. Okay. Fremont or New York area, Cricket? Yes. That's a, there's a Tri-City. And uh, we we find a very uh, a new venue. It's a wonderful place. You got to come to see. And we have rest uh best restaurant, so you can have can try some food and the best weather. Fremont City is the happiest city in the states in three years in a row. So come. Sounds wonderful. I'll try to be there. Thank you, Rebecca. Is uh, friends feel free to raise your hand. We, you know, we'll be sharing stories. We'll be dancing. We got plenty of dances to get to. So if you prefer not to share, that's okay. We'd love to hear from you as we set in chat. We're gonna take all the chat and this recording and send it to uh, Franz, Catherine, the entire family. So please uh, feel free to say anything or oh, type yes. anything in chat. Looks like we still have a hand raised, and oh, that's the, the that's the playlist. Oh, oh, okay. And that shows we're going to Dale next. It sure does. Up to the great Northwest. 
Hello, hello. Hi, Dale. Hi. Um, so it's interesting watching all of you people who've known me forever. And um, I only just started folk dancing in 2000. I met him uh, when he taught at Salt Spring Island Folk Dance Festival in 2006. So I'm a, I'm a newbie. <laughs> Um, and so, he, yeah, I taught in 2006, and then he came back and taught another couple of times before the Salt Spring Island Folk Dance Festival stopped um, in 2013. And then um, he came uh, to our Lyrids Folk Dance Festival in 2017. And um, that was in Vancouver, and he stayed right here in my house. Oh, France. really? And that, yeah. So I got to know him quite well. Um, and he was... Um, all that time was so supportive of our uh, groups and um, you could ask him anything and, and advice on, on, you know, what teachers we should get and blah, blah, blah. Um, he's such a great guy. So the first uh, dance I've got is uh, Chukanoto and this is a stamping dance that he taught when he was here in 2017. Great. And it's very simple. If you don't know, you can follow along. miss the end. He said, you just scream while the guide is on. What they do is they scream. So I'm going to scream. I'm not going to be embarrassed. Go and, for it. Uh, I'll go for it. Okay. for shouting at the beginning and at the end. 
<laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, he said, anytime the guide is on like that, go for it. Perfect. Um, I'm doing it next yeah. time. Great. Uh, okay, so let me advance my little name here. Dale, bonus for wearing an Eve t-shirt. Yeah, so I got this at one of the, you know, the first time I saw him at uh, Salt Spring Island. It's when I managed to nab one of his t-shirts. Um, okay, so the next one is Junov Skarachinita number one. And I learned this one um, when he taught at Laguna Folk Dance Festival. Um, not, not that many years ago. Okay, here we go. His grandma is a chinka, 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 his grandma is a Благодушка медена шикеряна, чи уграла в градинчица, чи уграла в градинчица, ляна галяна портукаляна, благодушка медена шикеряна, аляна галяна портукаляна. Благодушка медена шикеряна. Изгала е месеченка, 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 Аляна галяна портукаляна, благодушка медена шикеряна. Да си бере пастракитка, да си бере пастракитка. Аляна галяна портукаляна, благодушка медена шикеряна. Аляна галяна портукаляна, благодушка медена шикеряна. Very nice. Always I love that dance. So, I love that dance so much. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, it's a great one. And you know what, I... I know when other people put this on, sometimes it's really quiet. I did modify the music if anybody wants to have one that's a good volume level, you can yeah. get it. <laughs> Absolutely. Or if you have a tricky piece of music you need help on. Yeah, it'll, that's it'll, right. Any, anytime. <laughs> All right. Yeah, if you're anybody who's looking for music, um, you know, send a note our way. There's many of us who have large collections. <laughs> Indeed, right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, Dale, I understand you're going to be leading the next Spotlight dance. Correct. Right. And okay. what are we doing for the Spotlight? We're doing uh, Liliano Mome. Just a minute here. So you all know that. There so we before go. she puts it on, that means that we'd love to have as many of you as possible turn on your video and get up and dance, even if you only have just a little tiny bit of space, because we love to see everybody up here dancing. That's part of the community. And if you can't or you don't want to, that's fine, too. We understand. And if you are going to get up and dance and you don't want to be spotlit, then you probably should turn your camera off, because if we catch you dancing, we're likely to spotlight it so we can all enjoy it. So here we go.
Everybody dancing, yes. Absolutely, all the people dancing together. These songs, wow. Beautifully done. Oh, well, they- someone someone asked about the online card. Yes. And so I thought I would mention that. Uh, I created a, a Google Slides document, and it is a card that will be shared with Franz and the family. Uh, in remembrance of Eve, and anyone who wants to participate and create a page, they are just put a uh, link in chat. It's tinyurl.com slash card for the number four Eves, and you're welcome to go out there and create your own page. If you go down to the bottom of the column on the left, you'll find the blank pages and a few templates, and you're welcome to read everyone else's. We just ask that you don't change anything that anyone else has. And please don't select to use a theme because if you do a theme, it changes everybody's cards. So do whatever you want on yours and put in videos or pictures or whatever you'd like. Um, And you're more than welcome to to add something there. So we'd love to have you participate. I'm sure that, that Franz and the family at some point in time will enjoy being able to sit down and read through all of those. Someone asked how long I was gonna leave it up. I'll leave it up at least for the next two or three weeks. I'll give people a chance to get out there and participate. And I know a lot of people have said they want to think about what they want to put. And maybe they have a picture in mind they want to want to find to be able to put on the card. So we'll leave it long enough that people have a chance to, to participate. And think about it, right? Find just the right picture you want to put up, right? At times like this, it's hard to, hard to put things in the words sometimes. It is. And, you know, he was, I was very fortunate, you know, um, years ago, I was asked to be part of the research committee at Stockton. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Stockton, we have a research committee and two members of the research committee are assigned to each of the teachers during the first week of camp. And they sit in the classes and review all of the dances as they're being taught and review the actual written dance description and try to make sure that the dance description Uh, correctly represents the dance the way it's being taught. And particularly, you know, dance descriptions are not easy to write. (laughs) You think they're difficult to read, you ought to try writing them. (laughs) So so sometimes it's really hard for the teachers to be able to figure out how to describe it. So as we sit there, we try to set it up, try to make whatever changes or corrections will help people to better understand the dance and do it correctly. And then we go over them with the teacher to be sure that what we think we saw and what we've written down is correct. Anyway, the end result of that is that being on the committee has given me an opportunity to really get to meet many of the teachers and work with them and get to know them personally, besides just taking a class. And Eve was always such a a fantastic person to work with when I had the opportunity to do research on his dances, it was always a a joy. 
Um, he really was, was fun. One time he had one dance that he had written up in, I don't remember if it was 2-4 four or 4-4, four, four, but the instructions said one or the other, but obviously changed partway through. And we had like 67 measures. I mean, it was just something was clearly wrong. And so I got together with him and said, yeah, I think we have a problem here. And we sat out there in the lobby and sang and danced and danced and sang and tried to figure it out. And something was duplicated that shouldn't be and something was missing. And, and we laughed and laughed, finally got it all figured out. And he says, that's what happens when you write your descriptions at two in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's great. Great story, Cricket. And then we'll, when Dale's back, we'll talk to Dale because she's doing a special party on Monday at her class too. So let's not forget to ask Dale about what ah. she went for that. But um, we have one of our hosts we haven't talked to yet. Ah, uh, that must be Catherine. Hey, uh -oh. oh, a t-shirt, customized pro t-shirt. Very nice. Yes, I can't stand t-shirts with the sleeve that comes down to here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's uh, a modified e t-shirt. Uh, I'm just thrilled that I was able to be part of this. Eve was my teenage idol. He was my crush when I was like 17. <clears throat> <laughs> and I've enjoyed him ever since. Adoni told me that I could share a photo quick. And I'm going to... I'm going to see if I can do that. Hmm. You may if you can. <laughs> I may if I can. Um, oh, here it is. Sorry, it was covered up by another window. Can people see this? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. That's that. This, this is not the first Eve Moreau workshop I went to, but it's one of the early ones. I think this is in the winter of... 1972-73. Here's Eve, of course, in the front of the line. And this is Michael Kuharski. I know a lot of you know him. And this cutie with the orange tights in the third spot in the line is me. Um, fashion sense has always been a, a little bit of a challenge for me, but uh, I... I don't know what dance we're doing, something with a belt hold, and look, we're all up on our toes, just like we should be all together. Um, it's a the same angle, that's nice. Ooh. It's it's not a good photo, you know, somebody with a little instamatic in a dark room, but, uh, but I love this photo and I ran across it today, thought I would share it with you. This is in the Great Hall in the Union at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, probably 40 years after this photo was taken. In this photo, I'm 18 and Michael is probably 20 and Eve is maybe 23, um, 24. 40 years after this, we had another workshop with Eve in the same great hall. And sometime after midnight, Eve was sitting over on the steps at the side of the hall. I went over and sat next to him and he said, I'm getting too old for this. I, I can't be on stage all day and then have energy to be the life of the party after midnight. And I said, well, you do a good job of you know, looking like you're having a great time the whole time. He said, yeah, I am having a great time. I just, I need a little rest right now. <laughs> and then he got up and danced some more. It was, he always looked like he was having fun and he did have a great sense of humor. I'm going to stop sharing this and share music before That's a I- That's dollar photo, Catherine. Before I forget, I just, I hope you all enjoyed that one. I- like it a lot. Um, the My other little Eve story that I'm going to tell, Mady talked earlier about uh, missing a, a few years of dancing because of having young children. I think probably an awful lot of us have done that. And I did that. I had you know a few years in the 80s when I was late 80s, early 90s. I was mostly being a mom and working full time and being stressed out. Um, but there was a workshop sometime in the 90s 
at uh, the Eau Claire, Wisconsin Folk Dancers had a 25th anniversary workshop and they invited Eve and they called it the Red Record Workshop. We did, we did the entire Red Record at that workshop just dancing some of them, but a lot of them Eve retaught and sort of cleaned up places where they had, you know, where the folk process had done its thing. And, <laughs> and that was such a fun workshop. He taught a few other dances too, including Gagaushko that was just done, oh, five or six dances back. One of my favorites. Um, after that workshop, I was so energized. I was like, yes, I can drive to Omaha every week to dance. I don't care <laughs> what else is going on. And that's really what pulled me back into folk dancing was that workshop. Wow. And, and that that's wonderful cool. weekend with Eve and the Red Record. I've probably talked enough. Should I do a dance? You have. Well, I don't think you've talked that's too much, but we'd love to have you dance as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to do two dances. Uh, the first one is Starczeska Rechenica, the old people's Rechenica, which is appropriate for a lot of us these days. Um, it's a simple dance, but it's one that I love. And the second one I'm going to do is Zhenski Chapras, uh, a Pravo variation from Thrace. Um, there is a longer version of the music, but I have the short version, which was Eve's original one here. And I'm just going to dance them one after the other. So here, here is Starczeska Rechinica. By the way, this is a called dance. There's no specific time to switch steps. Um, I'll probably do a little, you know, a little flip of the scarf when I'm about to switch, but you can switch any time. I think we're going. Oh, sorry, I had the sound turned down. Thank you. 
Sijinsky Chapras. Great. There's a little. There we go. And thank you. Let's tell everybody that you also taught that at June camp. I did. Camp is it? And it's where I learned it. Can't thank you enough for teaching it to me. Just a few months ago. It seems like a long time. It's been such a big year. Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> no kidding. Right? But, ah, just last June. And we said thanks when Mady was around, but also, Catherine, thanks for pivoting with us, right? As you were on the Alphabet team. And as soon as we yeah. said this, you said, man, we're in. Yeah, Adomi and, and company, the crew here, asked me and Mady because we're the ones that really care about diacritical marks on the vowels and the consonants. <laughs> and I love, I love Adoni and his, and his uh, yeah, like a diacriticals. <laughs> but, but pivoting to Eve was an absolute no-brainer. It was wonderful to be part of it. And I'll be back in a while. You'll be back in a while. It is absolutely. And, um, we will do, and we will do alphabet yet in the future. Yep, yep. Whenever you do it, I'm on board. I, I love uh, Catherine's email to me was, I emailed her and Mady and said, hey, you know, we're going to do diacriticals. Would you be interested in being dance leader? It's this day, it's this day. And she immediately emailed back and said, you had me a diacritical. Right? So, <laughs> perfect. so thank you, Catherine. Um, now we got two special guests we'll go to, and Susan, so three special guests is let's bring Yap back up. Perfect. Thank you. Part two. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. I'm still awake. How couldn't I with all of you with these wonderful memories? By the way, I think Eve is watching over us here from above, and I think he will be very proud of uh, the amount of dances that you remember, that you do, and I can speak from a colleague of his now, also doing it so nicely and in the right styling. Uh, you had a good teacher in him and you have a good memory. So I think he would be proud, uh, would be proud. And if Hans and his uh, family get to see this, they will be too. So Jaap, yes. what, what time is it where you are? It's it's uh, 10 to tw 2 at midnight. Yeah, well, I'm fine. It, this is uh, one of our after parties that we're used to, right, in camps, I guess, <laughs> especially for Eve. Um, yes, uh, 
the joint product projects that I did with Eve were definitely highlights in my career. And I want to mention two. And, and then I will, speaking of the late hour, I will bow out respectfully and um, to, uh, leave you. So I want to leave you with two, uh, two special memories that I have and, um, and, uh, of our working together. I already showed you this picture of Stockton uh, Folk Dance Camp in 1992, I think it was, uh, where Eve not only sang with me, Karam Feel, but knowing Eve, he, he does the announcements on the cassettes, in the old cassettes, and I did that too. So he announced this dance as Karam Feel. On my, red, on my yellow tape, that's my voice, and he was imitating me there. So the times that Eve and I were together were a, a, a definitely a highlight for me. And those who live in the Northwest Vancouver area, you remember that Eve and I did the Bulgarian festivals was organized by the Spreadleys. And some of you have, remember that. And we did three festivals and this is from 1992, Eve and I, and I got this picture from Eve as a present of a, a memory. And we had, uh, we were talking and we came up with this idea that all these beautiful dances that they learn from us are not always the dances that people see people doing in Bulgaria when they go to a wedding or a party. How come? Well, it's because the dances that we teach are only done in a certain town or village, or we learned it from a specific source. So when you go to a wedding or a, in Bulgaria, they dance basic dances like the Pravo Choro in different styles, Paidushko, Daichevo, definitely Elena Moma, and the Deve Torka. Once you know these dances and you can do them in different styles, you got it, you got it made in Bulgaria. So even I just developed this concept, Pen Bulgarian Folk Dances. And Eve thought of the, about the subtitle, How to Survive on a Bulgarian Wedding <laughs> as a Recreational Folk Dancer. So that's what we did. And... Um, uh, that that was, uh, we made a syllabus with it, and it was, at that time it was a cassette. And then the second time we met, uh, also in a camp, of course, Stockton Folk Dance Camp. Eve has been there many times. I've been there about also many, well, 18 times, not always as a teacher. I lived in Sacramento, California, an hour away from Stockton, and I always was a regular musician. I played the flute and the guitar singing in the band. First, it was the stock tunes and then the bi-coastal bands. So Eve and I, at one of the parties, I think it was a discussion that we had either in his room with a nice glass of wine. And Eve said, did you see this new CD that came out, Balkanton, where Eve made his red album on? This was on Balkanton Records. Um, there's a new company now called Gega, Gega. And uh, they produced a, a CD called The Greatest Bulgarian Folk Dances, the very first on that new label. And Eve and I were listening to it, and then we looked at each other and said, the title says Greatest Bulgarian Folk Dances. Well, if they would have asked us first, <laughs> we would have come with a different selection. We know what the people like, and what is the greatest folk dances. So Eve and I thought, why don't we do redo this whole thing? So we came up went to Bulgaria, actually it was a big project, and we made this CD, Aida Na Choro. And it says here, uh, speaking of alphabet, Eve uh, insisted on the alphabetical order of our names. And he, it says here, recorded in Bulgaria under the supervision of Jaap Leegwater and Eve Moreau. And so we brought the Bulgarian record company. We're very happy, congratulations on your CD. However, if you would have asked us, we would have come up with a different selection. So they did ask us, they invited us, and then we made our CD. Can you imagine that we could tell these people what we wanted? So Eve decided, why don't we do 20 of your favorite Bulgarian folk dances, 10 from Eve and 10 from me. So Dobruzhanska Pandala for me, of course, Chuku Yankino, Dos Patsko of Eve. And it was re-recorded on this wonderful C uh, um, um, uh, CD that at that time also was on cassette. <laughs> but what was the highlight for us, and now I'm going to share something with you that was a project that Eve and I had, but because of his passing, we never made it. 
or to our procrastination or busy schedules. We never did it. We wanted to put out the 25th anniversary of that CD and put a booklet in there with pictures and tell the whole story. You know, Eve always likes background information, anthologies. So we wanted to put that out as an anthology. This was for us one of the highlights in the studio. Can you see that picture clearly? Yes. Can you see it? Yes, we can. I don't hear you. Yes. Uh, okay. Can you yes. hear my voice? Yes. We can. Right. So we can here it. you see Eve and I in the middle on Eve's side is uh, uh, Emil Kolev. Uh, in the middle is Christopher Radanov, the clarinet player on Chukuriankino Choro and many other dances on the Red Album and a retake on this album. And Kosta Kolev was still alive next to me. Three of our people that we admired that Eve had also worked with on his Red Album. And if you go through your record selection, you will find them as the arrangers of many folk music. So here we are, Eve Moreau and I from Canada and Holland telling these Bulgarian musicians how fast to play, how often. We even danced on our socks on that CD. And we can honestly say that all these records that came out before Eve and I did this one with even, yeah, uh, we're basically music for listening where we fit a, tried to fit our dances to. This is the first CD, oh, sorry, the wrong one. <laughs> this CD. I mean, this one, that your teachers, even Yap, dance on it with the right tempos. So Dos Patsko, uh, Neda, Voda, all these dances are on there. So that was one, definitely one of my highlights with uh, Eve to do that. And uh, I'm so proud that we got to meet our her heroes in the folk music, these arrangers in person, and tell them how to do it. So um, I, I'm planning to do this project now digitally. We, we, I'm going to reissue that CD. Uh, I'm going to talk to Franz. Uh, we have some pictures that we're going to put in there. And uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure Adoni will know how to do that. <laughs> but I want to do this project still. And the other little thing I want to finish off with is, did you know? that some of the dances that Eve teaches were brought to him by his students or his dancers in his ensemble from Bulgaria. Eve had a company called Les Jean de Montpellier in Montreal, Montreal, and some of the dancers were Camille Brochu. She was in Stockton also one time, and she was curious about Bulgarian dances because she danced with Eve. And she brought back a dance that Eve taught and that we started this evening with, this afternoon with, Dobruzhanska Reka. Da -da -da -di -di -dum, da -da -dum -dum. Was taught to Camille Brochu, to Eve Moreau. She learned it with Ensemble Sredets in Sofia. It's basically a part of choreography, as you can tell, so many figures. Beautiful, very popular. But Eve popularized it. He took it from her. And he also mentioned her in his dance note as the source. Now, how come Yap and Eve both teach the same dances to different music? Minka, Vlashko. Well, Francois Legault and Monique Lagarde were also dancing in that company and went to Plovdiv for one month. I studied there two years in that academy. I was there when they came. And they came when they, would, they did these dances, Minka and Vlashko, and they brought it to Eve. So Eve didn't have good music for it. And so he had an accordionist that had a restaurant in Montreal. And on the recording that you danced this dance, a slower version on what we know from the CD, Vlashko and Minka are played by this Bulgarian accordionist. I think Eve plays Tapan on it, on the recording. And um, that's why, and I used the Dutch band playing this music. So Eve and I sometimes teach the same dance because they come from the same source. I was there when Francois and uh, Monique Lagarde uh, uh, learned this dance and taught it to Eve. So, and then the other, and that's the last thing I start with. There's too many things. I hope we have many more of these sessions in the future. When I put my fourth LP out, this one, on the back is a photo of me. You cannot see it, but the credits, I will tell you what it is. Here are the credits. Photo back cover, Eve Moreau. Oh, wow. So this is, I think, very, very uh, uh, illustrative. What I told you before, Eve was about sharing and cooperating and working together, collaborating. So Eve provided the picture 
This picture was made by Eve. Uh, it's next to the rehearsal hall of Le Jean de Montpellier, where I taught them some Bulgarian uh, choreography at that time. Eve, I'm ta ta talking about these things now, and I miss you so much. And I know all the people that were here are missing you too. And I feel so blessed that Eve has been a part, a big part of my year, and he will always remain that way. And the joy for me was doing working with him together. I was lucky to play in the band in Stockton when Eve was teaching, because if, if he, when he was teaching, I was not. And when I was teaching, he was not. So that brought us to at least six times in Stockton and in Maine Woods together, where we developed these wonderful ideas. Thank you, dear people. It's Thank you for inviting me. I couldn't find a better place to share this loss and to share the feelings and emotions that we have. Thank you, Cricket, Adoni, Holy, uh, all the people that are there, Dale, too many to mention. And I want to now ask you what you have to share in your memories with Eve. Well, we'll go to Susan next, but Yacht, want to say thank you very, very much. Oh, check your volume. Chabel, one, two, I lost sound, Adoni. I don't uh, hear you. Papa, can you hear us? Can you hear us? One, two, three, four, five. Cricket, you can hear me, right? Uh, you're muted, Cricket. I can um, hear you. Can you yeah. hear us, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I have you. I hear you. I hear you. You're back. Good. So I want to say thank you from us. Later, you'll be sleeping. But we're going to show the great fire alarm video in a little bit, too. So that's where you and you and Eve were at Stockton at the same time. And the fire alarm went off right as you were <laughs> I, how When are you going to do that? We're going to do it in probably half hour or so. I stay on. I have to see this. <laughs> <laughs> it's have wonderful. So have fun, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yap. We appreciate Thank you all for having me. And thank you for sharing all your beautiful memories of Eve with us. Let me make Susan a co-host here so she can unmute. One moment, Susan. Go ahead and try to unmute. There we are. Okay, that worked. You can hear me? We Perfect. can. Okay. Well, this is just uh, another sh short example of, I mean, not only what a beautiful dancer and teacher he was, but what a kind and generous and thoughtful person he was. And I think 1986, the folk dance group in Bozeman, Montana, invited him to come give a weekend workshop. And we were a group of like 15 dancers. And if we got the whole state together, we might get 30. And Bozeman is in the Southwest Montana. And you would be lucky if you could get flights from Bozeman to Montreal in three flights. <laughs> and Eve, Eve said, I mean, he knew that we, you know, we we had saved up our money and that we were we didn't have a lot of money. And so he said he would take any flight. He would take as many flights that we could get the cheapest flight. And he came out early so that we could take him to Yellowstone Park for the afternoon. And I know this had to have been like April or May because the roads were open partly into Yellowstone. And so we went down with him to Yellowstone. He was really good at spotting animals. And then he always remembered his weekend there. He stayed with us and he was just the most wonderful house guest. We really missed him when he left because he never got his luggage. So he spent the weekend with no luggage. It went to Japan. Um, so he borrowed shirts from my husband, uh, picked out what he thought his favorite shirts from my husband's collection. And then, as I said, it was April or May. And so Saturday when we got up to, you know, it was going to be the, the beginning of the folk dance weekend and we had a foot of snow. Uh, so, so it was very memorable for him as well as for us. He was, he, he was just always not both generous and thoughtful to try to make things better for everybody. And I was so glad to have gotten so many years dancing with him. Thanks. What a great story. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> well, Cricket's well, job is still up. Should we move our program around? Sure, let's move it around so he doesn't have to wait up in half an hour. Exactly. And Yap, you owe us a picture, uh, Deidre and everybody, we, you owe us a picture for a future party of you in your new leather suit. So 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you're so considerate, so kind of you. Thank you. I'll stay on for a little while. <laughs> All right. Is uh, Dale, we can queue up the fire alarm video. Uh, Cricket, do you want to give oh. things, right? Well, and Oh, here she goes. She's all ready to go. Is it starting? There it goes. Okay, this is Eve Burrow again reporting live for CNN Atlanta. Another rumor has it that some frustrated countries like Norway and Albania, who were not invited to be part of the staff this year, may have had something to do with this. But again, this is not a confirmed report. This is not a confirmed report, but it is one of the possibilities that's being studied. A special crash team from FBI and CIA are here right now, studying all the evidence, monitoring satellites and other secret information on the airwaves and the phone lines. But it is a possibility. Again, we remind you, Norway and Albania are being prime suspects in this affair. Again, everybody remains very calm here. There is a sense of solidarity and support. It is nice to see the Koreans hang, hugging the Japanese. It shows that when hard times hit, this is when we band together. And obviously, folk dance is the key, obviously, to world problems yes. and tensions in this global, planet, isn't global. it? What do you? Where are you from, madam? Watertown, Massachusetts. Watertown, Massachusetts. And yes. uh, w what is your name? Basha Jevanovsky. Could you repeat that again? <laughs> Could you spell that for me? I can translate it. Babs Hollyhock. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, is uh, are you a victim of what has just happened? Here? <laughs> On a lifelong level, yes. <laughs> okay. I saw. So I think I met your mother a while ago, and she seemed a little concerned. She doesn't know where you are. <laughs> She's right here, madam. Again, this is CNN News live from Stockton, California. The alarms are still on, as far as we know. Are or are those the crickets? <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear, that's That'll the be the day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe we have some Australians here somewhere. Where are the Australians? Hello. Hello. Can you have your name, please? Jenny. Jenny. Uh, you seem to be very, very laid back about this whole thing. <laughs> Is this because Australians generally are very laid-back people, or do you feel that this is all a false alarm and that we'll all be back dancing in a few minutes? They have false alarms all the time. They have false alarms all the time, folks. So, um, again, if anybody has any... Oh, I would like to interview this gentleman here. It all happened while this man was leading a dance. What do you think really happened, sir? Well, I was just busy with dancing, and then ging the alarm off. Ik was maar rot geslokken, eerlijk gezegd. Nou, dat had ik helemaal niet verwacht natuurlijk. Ik snap het wel. Are you from Norway, man? <laughs> ja, natuurlijk ben ik van de... Tuurlijk. Ja, dan krijgen we nou toch uh, allemaal, hè? Oké, okay, thank you. I, I believe you are from the Netherlands. Is that correct? Holland. Holland. <laughs> Holland is dan. <laughs> Oké, okay, but uh, do you think that everything is under control and that we'll be back? Finishing your dance? Yeah, we'll start with the second movement. I hear five. music out there. <laughs> is this your dance playing? <laughs> yes, it definitely is my dance. I think we should go back in the building. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Folks, thank you for your support. I'm going to sign off now. This is CNN News live back to Atlanta. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what, a, what a perfect timing to show it.
now and uh, having both of us at the beginning and the end. <laughs> It this is this is tough, you know. This is just Eve, you know, so improvising. This was not a study in talent show. This, I mean, I remember the alarm went off. I was even looking at my remote uh, microphone thing, but if that was the problem, I saw also Steve Kotensky behind uh, Eve. Uh, but this is so, yeah. This is the 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 humorist and the and the theater man, Eve Moreau, incredibly. And what an interview he took with me. <laughs> I love it that your first thought, right? Because you're always, there's always headset problems. I love that your first thought is this fire alarm goes off and your first thought is it's my microphone. Yeah. Just and, I'm, and I surprised to keep dancing until they told me I couldn't anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect for folk dancers. Everybody just kept dancing. They're like, different rhythm. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Thank you. You're so sweet to change the program for me so I could see this clip. Dale, thank you also for showing it to us. And uh, what a memory. But and Yop, you'll be on with Paul Collins in a few hours, I'm sure. And you were at Burnaby this last Wednesday, sharing memories of Eve. You know? Yeah, they people asked me to to as a as a guest, and I'm very pleased to do this. And uh, it, it uh, it's very special. Yeah. Thank you for having me and uh, enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you for joining us. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Delight to have you. Thanks, Cricket. Okay. Cricket. Uh, how about a couple of dances? And then we've got some more memories. And we've got Denise Heenan coming up. And then whoever else raised their hand. We'd love to, we'd love to hear from all of you guys. As I'm, everybody's learning stuff today. And sounds good. And we're we're back to Mady at this point. And it's helping us off, right? Hi, Mady. Oh, it is indeed. You know, it's at times like this, it's good to come together and, and be able to share with other people. Yes, I, I have to agree. Is, it's great. It's Those, that, for all of us. that video was marvelous. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I one of the things that was really special for me was to get to know Eve personally. Um, you know, he was my hero. He was my idol. And then in 2011, when he came to June camp the last time, he and France stayed in this house and for a day after June camp, they were our guests. One of the my favorite pictures, which I, I didn't get on the computer, but I can hold it in front of the camera, is Eve relaxing. This was at our dinner table closer. after dinner. A little closer. A little closer. Okay. Uh, oh, nice. Sorry. We're trying to get the, the light. Sorry, oh, there's a light behind me. Perfect. Is this working? Nice. Is that Definitely. working? Working. It's just such a sweet picture. And I will I'll put it in the this archive that you're you're putting together, Cricket. But just the the honor and joy of getting to know him as a family man, getting to know France. We saw them in Montreal with their with their kids. It was you know wonderful to get to know this person in other aspects of his life. Just you know, besides being a folk dance teacher, and as we can see, he was marvelous at so many things. Let's so, do. Before you start your next dance, let's unspotlight Cricket and me and then hold the picture up again, Mady, so people can see it. Sure. Especially people and on possibly I should um possibly I should have Rob, can you turn off that light so it's not reflecting off the picture? Or maybe this'll maybe this'll work. Oh, that's there. nice. Closer even. Is that closer? Closer, closer, get Oh, that's nice. There we go. Perfect. Look at that beautiful. Uh, maybe the light's better. Whichever way it works. That's I, lovely. I, yeah. Okay. Light back on, maybe. You know, the, before we go on to your dances, you know, the funny thing about that that video we just showed mm -hmm. is that, as I understand it, the very next year there was another fire alarm during the day, and there's a second video of him the next year doing this the other uh, fire alarm. And if we don't have it handy this week, maybe another another month we'll show that one because it was a lot of fun too. I'm, it was just, we, we have been laughing just so loud at these videos. So thank you for sharing those. It's, it's a relief to laugh. You know, it's part of the, part of, part of the sharing and part of the, the, it, part of the grief is to feel the joy. That's, and to remember the happy it. times. Yeah. And that's were such an important part of it. Okay. Anyway, what dances are you doing for us this time? And my group is going to do, we're going to dance tomorrow. So I'm preparing for my, for my group starting up after the summer, I was going to try and bring back all those Stockton dances I learned, but now we're going to do Eve dances tomorrow. So one of my 
longtime favorites has been Meg Dansko, and that's uh, a dance from Dobruja. Uh, we learned it at June camp when he was there in 2011. So let's put that on. I shared my music, and hopefully everything will go smoothly. Great is job. there time? Is there time for another one? There yeah. is. There is. Oh. Vodino. Okay. I've got Vodino Horo queued up here. This is sort of a variant on a Prava Trakisco. I think he. I think this is from 1999 folk ball when uh, when I saw Eve for the first time in a long time in the Midwest. Although that I have to say the Eau Claire workshop in 98 was one of the highlights of everybody, of the life of everybody who came to it. That was a fabulous workshop. But then he was a football, and I think we learned this then. Football in Madison. Vodeno Horo. <laughs> Gorna's <laughs> 
love that dance. Mm -hmm. Always enjoy that one. Thank you. It's a good accessible one. And I love the way it crosses the phrase. It just makes right. it a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. And then comes back, right? Kind of crosses the phrase. You're like, oh, I think I got it right. And then you're like, oh, when he hit it, it's back. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. Very satisfying. <laughs> Very good. Well, Mady, thank you. And we uh, have you on one more time, possibly. We'll see how time works out. We're just so everybody knows, we've scheduled people, we've had people schedule several sets of dances, and they all know that we'll get to as many as we can. <laughs> I'll be glad to join you only if it works, and otherwise, thank you for having me. Thank oh, you. it's a delight to have you, but we also want to allow people to share their memories. So if you and have the memories, memories are great. Want, oh, aren't they? So all of you out there, if you have some memories you want to share, you know, just raise your hand, go down to the bottom of the screen where the icons are, and it says reactions. And if you click on reactions, the one at the bottom says raise hand. And if you do that, we'll see your hand, and it will bring your picture up to the top of the screen. And when we get to the next sharing time, we'll call on you and let you share your memories with us. So please, if you have some fun memories, feel free to share them. Beautifully put, Cricket. So now we're back to Lon and Hollis. Hi there. Uh, I think we have the first non-Bulgarian dance on our set here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <gasps> anyway. I forbid. How did that happen? <laughs> he, he learned this in the 70s, but he didn't teach it until 1981. Um, that's Dr. And I think it's a good reminder that everything he taught was not Bulgarian. Right. Yeah. And we've only done this in the dark at the land, so. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Hello, hello. I double check original sounds. Did you guys have to log off? Yeah, it's, we got that this time. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think you're, we're running late, so I think we sh should just oh, go on. But 
We're running a little late, but we could take a couple minutes to talk about, we did Eben Road dances at Palomanians on Tuesday. We're asking everybody what they're doing. At Louis, did we do, did you guys do a bunch of uh, Eben Road dances? Some, some. some. Very nice, right? It's it's the thing we another thing we have in common, right? Is it's it's nice, you know, when you're playing, you know, someone else in the world is also playing and dancing into it at about the same time. So, thank you so much for being part of this. As as always, besides the regular Global Folk Dance Party, thanks for this special time with Hollis. Just having flown back from Michigan, right? Visiting family. Yeah, there's sort of the folk dance groups have sort of diminished in Michigan. I think there's one that meets once, twice a month on Sundays in Ann Arbor, but I wasn't there for those. And there's another one somewhere, but that's not like it used to be. Absolutely. But we're keeping it together and we're a bigger community now with Zoom, right? We have our local groups and also we're part of a part of it. We, we know our distant cousins better now. Yes. <laughs> we do indeed. Like so, you and me, get hanging around together. Much. Okay, so now it's off to announcement time. Oh, I see Judy has her hand up. Judy, is that that you want to say something? We'll put we'll put Judy on our list when we go to to, to do to do uh, the next round here. So let me adjust my screen, friends. Here we're only going to do two quick announcements. First one is thank you for sharing your life with us. Right, sharing the time, sharing the love of Eve and each other. Right, cricket is absolutely. That it's we all have busy lives and there are so many things going on and the fact that you would spend a part of each month with us here when you have the time and maybe you come once in a while maybe you haven't come before and that's fine you know whenever you happen to be free on the third saturday of the month and you'd like to join us we'd love to have you it's just great to come together and doing it at burnaby or Surrey or Palamanians or East Coast or Tuesday Night Revival or Argon or, or, or Nomads or you name them, Veselo. It makes what we're going through a little, a little less sad being able to share it together. So, and then the only announcement is next month is uh, we have the dances of Mihai and Alexandru. Is uh, Alexandru is traveling in Europe. He had a trip come up. We set this up of about six months ago, but a trip came up for Alexandru. So he won't be joining us live, but right now Mihai is flying back from Europe a couple days before. So plan is for Mihai to join us live and we'll have Diane, Sherry and Osako dancing with us. So we will feature the great, the dances of two additional great master teachers next October. Wonderful. Next October, next month in October. Next and, month is uh, October. <laughs> this October. But again, thank you. Thank you from Cricket and me on behalf of the entire Global Folk Dance Party team is um, you guys mean everything to us. And we've chosen not to do a lot of other announcements this week. But if you're looking for other online opportunities, just go to the NFO website to Judith's calendar and you can find a listing of all of the online activities that have been listed there. And I think that's most of them. Absolutely. And now um, we've got a couple of people. I saw Judy with her hand up, but we also, let's bring up, here's Denise Heenan. Oh, there's Denise. Denise. Hi, everybody. Hi. It's wonderful to see people smiling so much. That's what Eve gave us. It's love, it's joy, and he will be so missed. And um, thank you for putting all this together and helping us share our memories. Um, one of my favorite memories of Eve is that he and Franz joined me for my 80th birthday, that my club threw a party for me, and my big, wonderful surprise was having Eve and Franz there. It was a wonderful evening, and in fact, a whole weekend. We, uh, we all were gathered at Bill Cope's house for parties and food and sharing, and it was wonderful. I was going through some things looking for favorite memories and I came across this. Can you see that? It looks like mm -hmm. it's backwards on my screen. Perfect, Denise. <laughs> this, was, this was another one of Eve's creations, a skit at folk dance camp called Give Peace a Dance. And it was a 
worldwide special conference of gathering of all the teachers trying to get peace in the world through folk dance. Another one of my special memories of Eve is at folk dance camp when he did a special afternoon workshop on Provo. How many of you have held back when you hear a Provo start and you're not sure how to lead it? So he did the basic, basic Provo workshop one afternoon at Stockton and it was fabulous. So it's, it's a wonderful time to be able to share and we're so fortunate that we have friends in folk dance. And thank you, Eve, for all of the love you gave us. Thank you, Denise. Beautifully said. Mm. You know, let's go next, next to me over here, Becky. Sweetie, Beck's got a story. Well, they brought Judy up, but let's go to Becky first. And then you know we'll go let's to go Judy. to Judy first. Let's go to Judy. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Well, let's go back to Judy. Actually, I will go back to Judy. Beck's here. She's not going anywhere. <laughs> Hi, Judy. You should be able to unmute. You're Just muted. a second. You're still muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Now we can. Perfect. Okay, I don't know if there are many people that knew that uh, Eve and Franz used to have a folk dance workshop on celebrity cruises. The last one was in uh, the Caribbean. And at that time, he had as guest dancers, Sonia and Christian. And I guess there were about maybe 30 people that went on these cruises. And that was so much fun. But I wanted to show you one of the pictures that. Let's go ahead and unspotlight Cricket and me so we can see the picture. Can you bit. see it? Yes. Oh, uh, right in front of the camera, Judy. Can you move it to your left? Move it right over here. to your left. More, move it to your left. Straight right, put it right in front of your face. No, right in front of your face. Put it right in front of your face. Oh my! Oh my face! Exactly. Now hold it close. There. there we go, Judy. That's great. So tell us about it? that picture. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. No worries. Tell us about that. This was taken on on the ship, and there's. Can you see? Uh, Sonia and Christian yeah. mm -hmm. and Eve and Franz. That was so much fun. But after that one uh, Caribbean uh, cruise, he was done. He said he was retiring after that. But then, of course, you, I would see his name pop up in different workshops. So I knew he wasn't quite retired. <laughs> oh, thank you for that's sharing. what I wanted to share. Thank See, you. I'm was, glad we saw you waving your hands. So yeah, much. you know, there were um, Ping and Sally Martin were there too. So I don't know if Sally's here yet now. But you know, everybody, if you'd like to chat, raise your hand in zoom. If you don't do what Judy did and kind of wave. And if anybody sees one waving frantically, let us know in chat. So Judy, thank you for sharing that. You bet. And now Becky has got a story, honey. So <laughs> you have to come over. I've got you right here. Okay, get on the other side. It's a it's a good side. I, mm -hmm. I never got to know Eve, although I've been doing his dances for 40 years, and he was sort of a hero, but I always felt funny talking well to a lot of the teachers. Mm -hmm. And so um one time we were at Stockton and a few years ago and he had been teaching and so we were at an after party in um, Tiger Lounge I wasn't paying much attention and it was one of his dances so anyway I don't he was on my left he was on my I put my hand up like this and all of a sudden somebody took my hand and I looked over and it was Eve and he looked at me and said do not be afraid <laughs> <laughs> 
do not be afraid. Do not be I afraid. must have looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you, Speedy. <laughs> let's see, we have um, Holly. Oh, let's go to Diane and Holly. Oh, Diane, I'm sorry. Let me make you a co-host. This is one of the few moments. That, this is one of the few times online that Diane's not a co-host. There you go, Diane. Okay, I was at a North-South dance seminar, and he was doing the culture corner He's, and teaching tips. So he said, you have to teach to everybody in the audience. You will have music people, music teachers. They want everyone dancing on the beat. You have to make that clear. You have engineers. You have to get the counts exactly right to the measures, all the ands and us. And, and they says, you will have PE teachers. All they care about is that people are moving and getting their heart rate up. I'm like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and Diane, you get our heart rate up regularly, as well as doing some great subtle dances. You're also <laughs> great on the energy dances. You know, all I have to say, on with the program. <laughs> okay, let's go to Holly. Hi. Oh, yes. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Catherine, he didn't mention anything about linguists and diacriticals. <laughs> <laughs> That'll come later. That was in that was in lesson two. <laughs> Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, Eve was at Texas camp, teaching at Texas camp 10 times, um, many of those with Franz, and I just want to share a few quick pictures of Eve. Let me get my screen share going here. Okay, this is 1974. Both Eve and Andra Sampo were at camp that year, and this is Andor, Larry Weiner, Gene Bollinger, and Eve. Next picture, that is Eve at Texas camp in 1982. By the way, we're still using the same facility that we were back there in um, <laughs> 1974. And if you come to the NFO conference next year, you'll get to see it. And then last year, Eve and Franz were both at Texas camp, and we were all masked. <laughs> so who was that masked man? That was Eve Moreau. <laughs> and uh, as I mentioned also, Eve insisted that he wanted to teach, and here is Eve, and I think what he is teaching here is Jansko Kapansko. So those were a few pictures that I know most of you have probably never seen. There are more pictures at tifd.org of Eve through the years at Texas camp. Those I'll are wonderful. You. Thank you, Holly. Those are wonderful. We have someone else here. Bonnie and Howard is. Oh, wonderful. Right. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Hey, I saw the photo. I saw Denise with the photo of her 80th birthday party, and it reminded me of the photo that I have. Let's unspotlight Cricket and me so we can see the photo better. Oh, am I unmuted? Okay. You're, you're great. So, um, Adoni, Becky, Ellie, you all came to our house for dinner before Denise's birthday party. Absolutely. Um, am I unmuted? You're perfect, Bob. You Perfectly. Oh, great. Okay, great. I tap your phone real quick. It get it got dark a little okay. bit. And so um, before that, Eve and Frank came over for a while, and we were sitting on the sofa that you see here in the background, this sofa. And I had just had, we had, I just had two of my grandsons born that I'm taking care of. And Eve and I and Frank sat there on the sofa and talked about our, our grandchildren. <laughs> and... And Eve put his arm around me. You will see this. Yes. And that's what he said was uh, the most important thing in life is uh, family and love. And I still remember him saying that and Frank too, that here's, here's what's important in life. 
And I think that's the way he lived his life. That's the way he lived his life. Here, I'm tapping it again. So, um, Elia, Doni, Becky, and Howard and I were all at the dinner table after this. And then we went to Denise's 80th birthday party. Absolutely. Took, took them there. Do you remember that night, Adoni? Memor memorable evening. It was a great evening. Yeah. And yeah. it reminds me that we also owe each other emails to get together for another one. You're wonderful evening. <laughs> Looking forward to it, Bonnie. Anyway, it's it's all about family and love. We still Hi, have some, we still have some tomatoes around. We're, baby, Ooh. you will not run out of tomatoes before we get there, my friend. Great to see okay. you, Howard. Thank you, you for putting this um, together, everyone. Uh, Thank you. I had one real quick story of uh, three yeah. years ago at the NFO conference at Laguna. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were there and, and we sort of served as Eve and Francis' uh, taxi, driving them back and forth to different things. And uh, Elsie Dunnan put together a wonderful uh, video uh, that she took in Skopje, Macedonia, of Albania uh, villagers uh, celebrating. And it was on a hillside, very primitive. And even I looked at each other and it took us both back to Kupriftisa in 1971. There were six Americans and this one Canadian guy. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was so nice to re- visit that memory with him um and just a special guy and uh mm -hmm. thank you for putting thank all this you, together Trisha. because everybody's got a million wonderful thoughts about eve and yeah. as as do we and thank you all thank for you. sharing yes wonderful. and you are all welcome and thanks for joining us so we'll see you in a bit let's go to uh who are we looking for next we are looking for dina and then we'll do a couple more dances and then we got Oh, we appreciate Dina. And then we've got a video, special video to share. So let's bring up Dina. It's actually Dinah. And Dina. Um, Thank I, you. I have been yeah. asked from everybody for a very long time. Um, but um, I had known Eve in the 70s. And I don't know, I just came in really late because I was at the Polish Fest here in Portland um, and with Heidi, <laughs> right? And her Sisyphus kids. And um, and so I'm I'm maybe missed some things, but I don't know if you've all talked very much about Les Gens de Montpellier, the group that France and Eve worked with. And ah, cool. Okay, so I have a really cool story about that. Right. So I've had a couple of really neat times with Eve um, back in the 70s. And one of them was going to Disneyland with Eve and Jerry Helt and a few other friends. That was a gas, if, if you all remember Jerry too, right? Um, and so um, this one was... Um, I visited Eve in Montreal, so I actually got to, I think I attended, a, it's been long enough ago, it was 1981, I think, um, so got to attend a, a, one of the rehearsals of the Légion de Montpellier, but the big thing was in 1976, Légion de Montpellier, the group, the Québécois group that they ran, went to the big international folk dance festival in Dijon in France. And I was living in France at the time, and I don't remember how we made the connection, but I met them all in Paris. And um, we went together on the train over to Dijon and we were trying to figure out, well, this is a really big festival, man. How am I going to be with them? And Eve said, well, somebody, I remember who figured it out, but they just pulled me into the back. You know, I was part of the costume crew, right? <laughs> Taking care of the costume. So I got to be part of the group. Um, during the festival, it was an amazing thing. Um, you know, the Bulgarians were there, everybody was there from all around the world and all the different groups from France as well. You know, so you had the Gascons and the, 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 everybody. And, and, um, it's too much to tell the whole story, but trying to keep it short. But, um, there was one really amazing, um, uh, moment where we were all invited into this. I don't even remember the name of the building. Gosh, you know, that's so long ago now, but it was one of these really ancient places. It was sort of underground, a big dining hall. And it was this great service and all the, all the, the troop was in there. And I don't even remember who else, but it was just this a magical, magical time um, watching them dance and, and getting kind of close up a little bit, kind of hard to get close up in that big festival, but um, just a really cool experience. And, and um I've been I've been really grieving a lot for for Eve um, 
it's it's been really rough because I know that I haven't seen very much of him in a very long time. But um, when Bora died, he sent me a picture of of Bora and myself and my two siblings back then. That was also in the seventies, and they had visited my parents' house. And I don't remember the story exactly. There was something that people were traveling to get to, and and my parents' house happened to be stopped in Portland, and so. Eve sent me that picture, and that's the last time I got to speak with him at all. But um, anyway, I'm just how wonderful is that he, he he stopped and thought of you and sent you that photo. Yeah. yeah, he was so thoughtful, such a thoughtful person. It's been so long. I I I don't remember the last time I saw him. Even Riley, it's been so long. Right? Yeah. So um, thank you for sharing. That is that is a wonderful story. Dinah, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me share it. Yeah. Wow. Are we going to go on to a little bit more dancing? We're going to do a video. Let's oh, do we have a video first. Yes. A special video. Mary Marshall reached out to me earlier this week. She put together on YouTube, and we'll paste it in chat, this 21-minute video from Steve uh, being down in San Diego. And she not only edited that video from uh, Mary, feel free to unmute. A few hours worth of material. A few hours of video from 2005 and 2007. So I, this clip you're going to see is just some choice, a short thing for you here. But do check out the YouTube because um, I really tried to share the things we all loved about him, and it's all it's all there. I, I'm so glad I found that the tapes. I went and took them to have them digitized this week and. It's amazing work. So, uh, Dale, let's share uh, Mary's short version, and we just pasted in chat the longer version. And it's a great way to keep in shape <laughs> and yes. to move and to keep fit. And uh, dance till you drop should be your main you know, sort of aim. And it's so wonderful to see people. I mean, I feel I'm getting older, but there's older and much older. And it's great that Vicky was telling me about some of her students that are in their 80s and even some of their 90s which I think is amazing. And they're going to definitely follow that dance till I drop kind of approach. And it keeps them sane. It keeps them happy. And uh, so it's important to dance and learn about cultures. And remember also how important this was in our early stages 
we can all flash back to the first day we discovered folk dance. And for many of us, it was like an instant hit. It's not something that you're just like, oh my gosh, what is this? You know, as you walk by the door of the student union building or whatever, and you go, <laughs> and we're struck by the music and this incredible energy coming out of a circle of people joining hands. And uh, I, I think it's a wonderful thing, and, and I keep reminding myself how lucky we are, and that each of our groups are, in fact, individual little villages, is what it is, with very much the same uh, interaction and uh, context that you would find in the old village, which that itself is disappearing. That's sort of maybe the saddest thing for some of us who were lucky to be there back in the 60s. The villages are closing up. People are leaving the village for economic reasons. There's no need, I mean, there's no work. And uh, it's amazing to arrive in totally ghost towns, which in fact are being now bought by uh, Americans and Germans and British and Japanese investors who you can go on the internet and buy a house in any Bulgarian village tonight if you want. They'll take MasterCard. <laughs> If you were lucky to get there you know, a few years ago, you could find a, a village house for $10,000. Know, now it's, there's not much under $50,000. But still, it's an amazing, if you plan to <laughs> retire in the Balkans, it may be good. But still, it's not so, you know, have good news. But what can I say? We, Nonetheless, our villages uh, are, they're also dying out a bit. It's not uh, the huge population we had, but at least the energy is still there, I feel. And, uh, it's, it, it's up to us to, to maintain that, and hopefully other people can join in, but uh, I feel lucky that I came in at that time and that place. It's intensive timing, but uh, it's never too late, I mean, to join this kind of activity. But uh, really, really, it's, uh, how can I say, and I'm one of the few that managed to actually uh, be able to make a, 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 my living from this. I would have never, if someone had told me, you're going to become a teacher of folk dance, and you're going to have to be able to live from that. I mean, I still find it hard to believe, but uh, it is, it has happened. But again, I think it's a combination of being at the right place at the right time, and I don't think I could have done it today if I was coming into this whole world right now, but it did get me to travel all over the world and teaching in Japan and Australia and Europe and Taiwan and whatnot. And, Gosh, I mean, it's kind of weird when you think about it, but uh, try, I try, still try, I have a hard time explaining that to a Bulgarian, that a French-Canadian would teach a Bulgarian dance in Taiwan. <laughs> um, if I may, I wanted to let people know what's in the longer one is a lot more of him talking also, which I was really happy to find. There's There's more dancing, but also there's more of him drumming and him telling stories. So I think we sometimes forget that he was quite the musician as well. Yeah. And, and I got to drum with him and it was it was an amazing experience. And on the long video, you'll see him doing the foot tapping to Lava Strain with our band uh, and singing. He loved to sing. Um, if you And if you lose the link to that video or you don't have it, I've got it set so that if you just search on YouTube for Remembering Eve, it'll come up. You know, that's the one dance we didn't do this evening is Lava Strang, which when asked what was the most popular dance that he ever taught, he says the one that's been done the most has been Lava Strang. Mary, thank you so much for that video. The video that was just beautiful, Mary. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So <sighs> how about we do a couple more dances? Then, friends, we have Ahmed has stopped by. So we've got... Wonderful. Uh, so we're going to Catherine next? Absolutely. Hello, Catherine. Hi, hey, Catherine, in that lovely modified... I love that uh, even row t-shirt there that you've... I unmuted myself so I can talk to you. I'm glad to be back. And um, I know we're running late, so I think I'll just go ahead and dance. I can't resist, though, um, saying that after seeing especially the videos of Eve being so funny, I remembered being at workshops with him and he's teaching some serious dance. And then all of a sudden he would just rock out in the middle of the dance. And uh, uh, 
especially there's a, a little piece of the music of uh, La Ride, Trimartolo, where he would, you know, start doing the swim or whatever dance was popular at the time. He was a comedian. Um, the dances I'm going to do this set are Lalitsa, sweet little dance from North Bulgaria. Lalitsa is a tulip. And Preskachanka, the hopping, uh, jumping dance, it's a, a, a Paidushka type dance, also from northern Bulgaria, but further east. So here is Lalitsa. <laughs> Uh, share uh, share audio. Of course, I should share audio. Thanks, Catherine. Oh, let's see. There it is. So, take two. <laughs> <laughs>
Very nice, Catherine. Beautifully done. Thank you for letting me. That's me. No. We just love to dance, don't we? <laughs> A little exit music. That's perfect. <laughs> It's such a delight to have you with us today, and especially thank you. asking you to pivot from one set of dances to another. We really appreciate that. You know, it is not hard to pick a set of Eve dances. It's hard to choose which one out of the hundreds you're going to do. I wonder how many dances he actually taught. Oh, boy. Long, it's got to long, long. be a large number. Just to say 250. Mm-hmm. I don't so, know. Probably, you know, it's annoying Eve, it's probably 350. <laughs> Could well be. So thank you so much, Catherine. And we always look forward to the next time that you join us for the Global Folk Dance Party. Thank you. I look forward to it. Take care. And I understand we have a, a video coming up and then a surprise. <laughs> a dance from Holly first. We've oh, got- a dance from Holly first. Okay. Hello, and uh, you know, Catherine was right. It was hard enough to narrow down which dances I wanted to do. But of course, we're running late, so we have to drop some of our selected dances, which is like asking me to choose between my children, or worse yet, to choose between my cats. How can I do that? So, you know, throwing a dart, my dance is going to be Be Chalk off the Red Album, one of my all time favorites. And uh, oh, I kind of do every figure four times, kind of, sort of, and after the music changes once through. Um, I'll signal changes, but you can do the figures in whatever order you want.
Nice job. And thank you. Thank you for all your sets today. They're always lovely and we really enjoy dancing with you always. Thank you. I enjoy being here. I'm so honored to be included in this program in general and to share all of this with you today. Just, oh my gosh, it makes me feel wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll see well, you next Thank time. you, Holly. It is lovely. And now we have a video that we're going to show. And I do have to say that we talked a little bit about whether we should or shouldn't show the video. And we hope that people would feel good about it and not feel that it was inappropriate. But we thought it would be fun. Most of us know and love Drum Scotto. And we thought it would be fun to actually do it with Eve since we have a video of Eve doing it. So we decided to go ahead and, and do that. And we hope that you don't feel it's inappropriate to do so. Okay. So just before we show the show the video, um, I'd just like to you know where the video is. Okay. It's at Salt Spring Island Folk Dance Festival. And um, this was a really, really special place. And they, um, they, when they taught this dance. And what year was that, Dale? You know what year well, the been video few, is? They've been there a few times, so I can't remember exactly. It may okay. have been 2006 or, or maybe a later year. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. Okay. I think it, yeah, it was 2006 for sure. I remember now I edited the video and it said 2006 on it. And so thank you for sharing this wonderful video with us. So let's get up and dance Tremskoto. Okay. The dance from Bulgaria. Drum scoto. Ready and...
a great video. I love all the different blends of camera angles. Continued another amazing job by Dale. Yes, that was beautiful, Dale. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. And that was a band from um, Vancouver playing in the background. Yeah. She had a lovely voice. Nice. Oh, that's great. Let's bring up a special friend. Is uh, Let's bring up Amit. I'm here. And we've almost got you here too, Amit. Here we go. There you are, my friend. There I am. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So nice to see you always. So nice to see you too, Cricket. Difficult time for all of us. Yes, yes, it is. It's the reality of life, unfortunately. Um, it was so sad in a way that because first we lost Atanas and then Moshe and then Bora. And um, as you all know, that uh, Eve was the MC of these memorials and I looked at Eve afterwards. I said, Eve, two things we're going to do. I said, number one, I'm going to come to you, your house and interview you for your memorial. And then you do me, I said, but let's make sure we are not the next one. And he said, I'm trying. He said, you never know, but I'm trying. And we laughed together and et cetera. So it was, you know, you never know. Life is one day, it's today. Well put. So we got to keep going. So I'm sure everybody said millions of things about Eve because there's always a lot to say about Eve because he had multiple personalities, not personalities, multiple talents. <laughs> multiple personalities me, not him, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, he was multi-talented. Uh, but uh, one thing, uh, I, I might be the very first person to piss him off. <laughs> that was hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really proud of that, but in a way, I am kind of like, mm, good for me. I pissed him off. It's, it's tough. So what happened was in the beginning, when we first started teaching together, we, we taught a lot together, but not necessarily in, in United States. We, we did most of our together teaching outside of the States. We did several here too, but like in Germany, in uh, Hamburg area, uh, the German people have kind of like a ritualistic thing. When they find the good thing going, they repeat every year. So they, they ask me and Eve for, I don't know, several years in a row. So, you know, so that kind of workshops. So what happens is that, as you know, typical of me talking too much, making too many stupid jokes that nobody laughs but me. So we had the review session. And uh, so we have a flight to catch and everything, but I never look at the watch. So I'm doing my review session, talking with people, having a great time. And then towards the end, I see his face was not so like him. And I went to him and I said, are you okay? He says, no, I'm not. I said, what, what's the matter? He said, look at the time. And I got four more dances. You got six more dances. I said, oh, sorry. So the next time he comes to me at the next workshop, okay. He said, Ahmed, look, you taught 11 dances. I taught 11 dances, 11, 11, 12, uh, 22 dances. How much time do we have? I answer him, this much time. Divide that to 22, I divide. You have three minutes for each dances. Do not talk. Go to your dances so we can catch our flight. <laughs> you got it. He was, uh, he was one of a kind. He was, uh, to me, one a couple of the values that I, I, I uh, value dearly. He was a perfectionist. He was a great planner and great executor. And it was a perfectionist, really. And he was very straightforward. I often wondered if he was from Holland. He was so too straightforward sometimes. <laughs> so he would tell you if there is something wrong or if you didn't agree on something. He would just tell in a nice way, though, very uh, gentle way. Uh, he would tell you, like, uh, probably nobody knows about this, but he was supposed to be the one of the four for the world camp from the beginning. The way I designed, the way I thought was, okay, Steve, Joe, me, and Eve. All four of us are going to come every year, and the fifth teacher was going to rotate. And Eve came to me and he said, I cannot promise you for that. He said, first of all, I don't like teaching every year in the same event because it's, it gets too much. And also he said, um, you know, people need a break from, from our faces. And, and I also want to be able to say yes to other events. I said, I got you, Eve. So he said, you know, every other year, every two, every three years, whatever he said, but I cannot be the 
you know, every year teacher. I said, you got it. Okay. So that's, we end up having Joe Steve and myself for every year. I mean, I keep inviting myself. That's easy. <laughs> last year you had, but last year you had Eve. Last year what? Last year Eve came, right? Last year he came. Last year we did an Atana special, as you remember. He did the presentation and also it was so, you know, he did say, somebody has, has mentioned as well, he did say he retired two, two and a half, three years ago. And he really meant it because, you know, the art situation and also like, you know, he just didn't have it, you know. Uh, and he said, that that's it, I'm retiring. But we all kept saying, Eve, come on, one more, Eve. But this is special, Eve. I promise I'm not going to ask much from you, Eve. Just come, just stand there, just be part of it. Don't do anything. But of course, you know he's going to do everything, right? So, so he couldn't say no because that was in his heart. So, so he did come last year, and it was. I'm so happy that actually we had him last year. Was it so special? That was great. So. Maybe uh, it's not my play. It's too early to announce, but no, I'm not going to say anything. Okay. So that's all I have to say. Eve was one of a kind. Everybody is one of a kind. Everybody is a kind. But uh, Eve was really one of a kind. It was so, such a wonderful person, great hearted person. And um, really, I did learn a lot from him. Yeah, when I first met him, I can't remember where it was, but uh, oh, he was in Montreal. I was teaching at Steve Shillak's camp. I don't know if uh, anybody remembers from this crowd, but Steve Shillak uh, did Israeli and then after that international camp. So I was there at the international camp. He wasn't teaching, but I've seen his VHS. Like, uh, I think it was at um, uh, Stockton CNN reporting thing. Do you know that story? Okay, so I... Another I saw one? that. Yeah, that was a fire alarm or something oh, like that. They that. showed that video. You do okay. That one, and also I saw a VHS of Eve doing a uh, reporting at from Boras camp at the uh, Olympic swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm like, this guy is my kind of a guy. I loved it on the VHS, but I never knew him. Right, so he comes. So uh, Atanas was there, I was there, I, a couple more teachers were there, uh, uh, Moshiko was there. So he came and I was like on Eve, all, um, my eyes were all on Eve all night watching him, you know, what's he doing? He changed the whole feeling of the camp that evening because of his attitude, because of his humor. He was one of those kinds when you walk into the room, you know that the party is going to be great fun. All right, I'll talk too much again. So, all right, that's all I have to say. Thank you for having me. Ahmed, thanks for stopping by. And everybody, you know, you'll hear from Ahmed, you hear from us, you certainly hear from the family as more things are done, right? As things are going ready. So again, feel free to, you know, uh, Cricket, you know, we'll paste the card again, again, Cricket, is uh, after Sandy, you should tell people about the condolence card again for the entire family. Hey, Sandy. Hi, everyone. Um I met Eve quite a number of times when my mother schlepped me to workshops with her. Um, a lot of you here know, knew my mother, Esther Mazer. Um, so there's two things I really wanna share. Um, when my mom passed away almost four years ago, I immediately, one of the first people I emailed was Eve to let him know. And he, within two hours, sent me a response. And he wrote, Dear Sandy, so sorry to hear of Esther's passing. We keep fond memories of her and the happy dancing moments together. May she rest in peace. Please accept our sincere condolences. And I was shocked that he responded so fast because he's such a busy man. I didn't expect that quick a response. Right. And the other thing I wanted to show was a picture that I have of a workshop he gave at Ellen Golan's. Unspotlight, yeah. Cricket and I, so we can see the picture. There we go. I don't have it on the computer, unfortunately, but. Eve Perfect. is leading. The third person is my mom. And next in between them is Ellen Golan. And the strangest thing about this picture is looking at it, there are about two, four, like eight, eight, eight or so people in the picture. Only two of them are still alive. Oh my. And when you look at something like this, your heart just um cries, I guess would be the word. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, it, I think it's a reminder that we need to cherish the people in our lives and not 
put off till tomorrow what we can do today. If you don't have time to go by and see them, at least give them a call, send them a text, send them an email, do something. But, you know, we we all only have today. Um, you know, maybe we have tomorrow and maybe we don't. So all we're sure about is that we have today. So, and by I the way, Amit um, mentioned um, that workshop is at Steve Chillig's. My mother was there. Nice. Very nice. Thank you, Sandy. That was lovely. Three more dances and we have two more videos. So thank you for all your comments. As we said, keep putting comments in chat for the rest of this. And we'll make sure we share this with the entire, you know, rural family and cricket. Where are we going? Well, right now we're going to go off to Lawn and Hollis again. No, let's see. We're going off to Debbie. I'm sorry. Debbie and Dale time. Absolutely. Yes. Debbie and then Dale. Okay. The A team that so, starts with D. <laughs> right, exactly. So um, I'm going to do, I said I was going to do a fast dance. Now I'm going to do a slow one. One of my favorites uh, from, from Eve, um, Minka. Minka. Very nice, Debbie. There is a professional dance company, Perfection Gallery at the CBC. Tonight. So, thanks for having me uh, this this visit, and we'll see you again later. Debbie, thanks for being part of the core team. She's not dancing every month, but behind the scenes, she's usually tacking it behind the scenes and kind of everywhere. So, Debbie. Thanks for being part of the Global Folk Dance Party team, my friend. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank That's you so much. Thousand puppies you have for us. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're back to the great Northwest. Well, we were already in the Northwest in Oregon with Debbie, so we're going to head farther north to see Dale. Hi there. Um, can I show you a picture just before we get started? So this you is a may. picture uh, <laughs> just from the last time that um, even fronts were at Salzburg Island Folk Dance Festival. I think this was the last time. I'll just this one here. Can you see that? Oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Isn't so that fun? Uh, it was kind of interesting because they were um, 
it was at the end of the festival and everybody was in takedown mode. <laughs> and Todar started playing and France and Eve started dancing and singing. You can see that he's singing. And uh, yeah, that was pretty incredible. So I took a bunch of pictures. It was really interesting. That's fun. <laughs> fun. Uh, so what okay. are you going to dance for us for your last dance for today? So I'm going to do uh, Dragon Anatta, which is one that they taught us um, in 2017 when they were here. Okay, so it's another uh, simple dance. If you don't know it, just get up and, and join in. Here we go. Dragon Very nice. I know, right? I mean, it's just an example of like the amazing music that he picks, right? That the piece of music he set that dance to is just so wonderful. Right? I think, yeah. Really lovely. Uh, it's excellent. So um, I do want to tell you about the uh, Mon uh, my Monday night class, which Adoni's part of, and uh -huh. Holly, and uh, Diane Baker, and Kathleen on Jacques Dallaire in Quebec City. Um, we're having a special Yves Moreau class. We're gonna teach a bunch of his dances and also uh, dance some of the dances that we've already done in that, in the Monday class. So that's so. the Monday night dancing with friends? No, it's Monday afternoon. Uh, 
I think this thing's called Dancing with Dale in my basement or something. <laughs> I'm not sure what, what the calendar calls it, but it's in there at 1245. 45 yeah. Pacific time. Pacific you need time. to be sure and get a link in uh, in chat so that people can oh, find it. Just pasted it in there. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Awesome. It's so good. So great. <laughs> and Kathy's there. She's our tech. So uh, along with a whole bunch of other uh, wonderful techs, we, we, have a great, we have a great time on Monday. So special Eve Moreau session. Perfect. Thank you, Dale. Okay. So, um, so a member of the team, everybody, who you haven't heard of is Marie and Randy, who are with us on almost every Global Folk Dance Party, but it's the holidays. So they were unable to join us, but we have a video from Marie and Randy that Dale's going to play for us. And then we'll have one more spotlight dance led by Debbie. Is, uh, and then one more video after that. Hello, global folks. These are some memories of Eve from Randy. And Murray. I was most impressed that he would know the names of dancers in every group around the world. He really cared about the community. He was funny, knowing that entertaining while teaching was the best way to convey a love for Bulgarian dance and music. He loved alternate music as much as I did. There were three releases of his Bulgaria and Sons. He was very exacting after he sent me a Greek rendition of Das Patsko, when I edited a complex rendition, his only comment was, Das Patsko gets a little faster after it comes back from the break. This one should too. Only he would notice. And of course he was right. One person after another told me that one of their greatest thrills was dancing next to him. I certainly felt that way too. One time when Das Patsko was on, I said, this has to be the most famous of all your dances. He said, no. Labastrang. Of course, we all made the mistake of letting his Bulgarian dances overshadow everything else he did. He really was one of the most influential of teachers with great humor, knowledge, and love for his craft and for the entire community. You could tell he so loved what he did. His teaching style was so clear and he danced each dance with such a big smile, it was infectious. He was such a draw at dance camps throughout the US. People loved him and loved whatever dances he brought to the camp. He didn't have an ego, and you can't say that about many teachers. It was a privilege to be taught by Eve, and we were so lucky to be a small part of his world. My biggest thrill was dancing Sobrali next to oh, him. My biggest thrill was dancing Sobrali next to him, with both of us singing all the words together. We were on two of the cruises he and Franz led, and they were the ultimate hosts, making sure everyone was enjoying the trip. He left the world too soon, and we all have a right to feel cheated. But he left us an incredible legacy of great music, great dances, spanning all manner of styles and complexities, and great stories that we'll remember all of our lives. We, we both, both loved Eve, Eve and, and have great gratitude for the blessings that he and Franz gave us. And, and we, we give, give our, our deepest, deepest condolences to, to France, France and, and the family. Oh my. Hard to even catch your breath after that. But it's so true. I think we all. Okay. There we go. Yeah, indeed. It is just great memories. Great memories indeed. Okay, two more things, friends, is uh, we're going to do Dos Spotsko as a global spotlight dance. And then we have a different Eve video to show everybody as our kind of extra video. Then we head over to Paul's after party, which we'll paste in chat. Paul's, of course, also doing an Eve focus party. Um, so let's cricket. Shall we bring up Debbie? And uh, shall we start off Dos Spotsko? Sounds perfect. Ready to go. Thank you. 
Ah, uh, yes. Here we go, friends. Certainly a, a favorite dance for most of us. Absolutely right. I think yeah, Murray and Randy were right. Is except for the Spotsko, except for La Bas Train. This has got to be his most popular dance, right? You know, I, just a, a quick story. One of the things I think that I remember most about, uh, one of the things that I remember most about Eve is he had a, a fun way of explaining things. And I can remember in a class one time, somebody asked about the name of a dance and how the names came about. And he said, in the villages, they don't have names for their dances. They have the old dance, the new dance, Uncle Joe's dance, the wedding dance. You know, they don't bother naming them. He said, it's a little bit like bread. If you go into a bakery in France and you ask for French bread, they'll look at you like you're nuts because it's all French bread. It only becomes French bread when you get out of France. And he says, it's the same with the names of dances. In the village, they don't need a name. It's when you get out of the village that you need to name it so that you know which village it came from. So there oh, you are. So friends, we're gonna finish off with um, a band is back in, I think it was 83. This was oh my. <laughs> Stockton Talent Show Band. We have Bora Gaichki on accordion. We have Jeff O'Connor on bass. We have Johnny Pappas on guitar. And we have Eve on flute. So without talking about it, here it is. And we'll see you in about four minutes.
Cricket, you're muted. I got the wow. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, having everybody here and, and sharing all of this makes it, I don't know if it makes it any easier, but it, it makes it easier, I guess, to know that we're all feeling the same way and yeah, and how much we miss him. And I, the best thing we can do is try to emulate the way he lived and keep his dances alive. Absolutely. So team, do me a favor as I lost control of my mouse about 20 minutes ago. Go ahead and turn off security, let people unmute, and go ahead and remove Cricket and me from Spotlight. Gang, um, you know, if anybody has any final words to say, we've been talking a lot, but, uh, you know, feel free to unmute. Maureen, you're absolutely therapy for all of us. Great being, great being in the same family. People are now able to unmute. Thank you, Cricket. This was truly wonderful. Thank you so much for everything that went into it. It was really, really special. And everyone, before you before you leave the meeting, if you want to save chat, remember you just need to go down to the bottom, uh, almost in the middle, the, the three white dots or the three little dots there. And at the top of that menu, it says save chat. There are a lot of links in there and a lot of wonderful memories. And it went by so fast. I'm sure you didn't have time to read it all. Now you could do it. Yeah. Uh, just a note there, the last uh, piece that he played, he played it on this Frula. Oh, oh. the very one? This, yeah, the very one. Yeah, this is the Frula. He, he came to camp without a Frula, and he asked if anybody had one. And I had just brought this one to happen to bring this one to camp. So he played it. And when he played it, uh -huh. I, couldn't, I couldn't believe he got the sound out of it that I could never get. Oh. <laughs> Frank, was that at Stockton oh. camp? Yes. Yes. Thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> Right. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. No, no problem. I have some wonderful memories of Eve, too. When I first met him, I don't know if I'm on yet, but um, I'm Doris Wallman. And I uh, it was the beginning of my retirement folk dance uh, time, which was uh, in the early 2000s, I guess. I was at Florida Folk Dance Council for a weekend, and Eve was there, and he and Franz with there at the same time. Right. And he made a story of how he discovered Bulgaria. He, he oh, had yeah. one of these radios that was able to get the uh, feed from Europe. And he was listening to music and stuff from Bulgaria. And somehow he connected with Bulgaria. He either called or wrote back and forth, but they invited him to come and study in Bulgaria, which is where he began to learn the language and start to develop the music. And uh, he, he stayed there, he learned, he learned dancing. He went, I believe as a teenager, somebody may correct me, but I think that's the story that we got at the time. And then later on in the evening, when we had our folk dance sessions and he taught and we had a wonderful time. And then he and Franz, uh, we had, uh, we went around and we, oh, they did a culture corner and they discussed every lot of his, uh, the things he did. And then he and Franz did a clog dance and uh, they were so phenomenal. And they ended up facing backwards to the audience. And if you can uh, uh, make my screen bigger, um, they ended it with like this, with a heel click back and both, and both of, let me see. Oh, good, great. And um, they just did a, a click backwards with the heel. So let me get over here and let me get my camera down. And they did a heel click behind together. The sense of humor and the playfulness from the two of them was so phenomenal. It was really great. Uh, I, I Doris. Really that. <laughs> That's great. I believe you're right about the age. If I recall, he said he was 19 on his first trip over there. Yeah, and he, I'm from I thought it was a, a scout that he was in scouts and they they did a, a I remember from that from the workshop. Yeah, we I did a, they did a presentation of folk dancing and all the boy, rest of the boys in the boy scout troop hated the folk dancing and he just loved it. 
And I think that's what got him that started, is. especially the Bulgarian. And then he started that's listening the to the radio. That I, met, yeah, that's about the same I time believe they anywhere. even paid for him to come there. Yeah. The, and they, yeah, Bulgaria, I think. I think that was the first wow. time I met you, Andy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was the beginning of a wonderful life, and I'm still, thank goodness, still be able, able to enjoy it. He was in Florida three times, actually. I don't, am I unmuted? Can you yes, you me? are, Terry. Okay. Yeah, he was just three times. We didn't have everybody that many times, but of course, it was wonderful to have him and Frank, of course. So, not a moment that we didn't enjoy. Yeah. It's amazing. Did, I came in late. I wondered if any of you, if you did some of the talent shows at Stockton in the early days, Eve did some really funny things then. Did you, did you do those? Yes. Definitely. Okay. The one with the big t-shirt with the extra arms and stuff. I haven't done that. that. What we uh, decided to do was we did the three faces of Eve and certainly Stockton winter weekend in January. We're going to have a couple hours. We didn't want to broadcast any from anything from Stockton that hadn't already been broadcast in one form or another, right? Is that so? But no, uh, it will absolutely have more e-videos from Stockton is coming up. And you're right, it's hysterical. Thank you, Donnie, and your whole team for putting this together. This is utterly amazing. Oh. 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 Yes. Wonderful. Hi, Judith. Hi, Judith. Hi, Judith. Doris, Andy, Jerry, we're all here. Yes. The, the Everybody people, but Gary, who refuses to do the togetherness. Friends, let's say good night. Thank you. Night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.